All right, we are here, folks. Sorry for the delay. Uh, we are having technical difficulties. Connor will be here in just a few. I do apologize. We were running a little late. Connor will be here. Here for Collision and Battle of the Belts. Welcome to AEZ. All right, sorry, there she is. There we go. Awesome. All right. We were a little bit late, had technical difficulties, me and Connor both. So, but we're here. No worries. I feel like there's been a ton of internet problems for everybody lately. I had a couple of people I was playing with earlier just disconnect out of nowhere. I think Connor has, he's been having issues all week, all week with his internet. So, yeah. I, I've been there. I've been there. I'm a lazy bum today, Mike. No, I'll get on it. I was just streaming up until like the moment this started. Um, and I was late to my my original job today. So I didn't have time to make one yet. I apologize. But I promise I'll make it extra cool just for you, okay? No issues. No issues at all. Oh, they start with the trios match. I like that, honestly. Yeah. Welcome, everybody, in the chat. Mike, Johnny. Hi. You know what Mercedes' name is after the segment on Dynamite? No, Johnny, what is it? Oh, I got like a rough landing out to the outside. Ooh, buddy's working stiff tonight, man. He is, he's laying them in snug. <laughs> he's so quick. I'm always so surprised with Buddy. You're, I'm like, you're so big. How do you move like that? He's a phenomenal athlete. I, he is phenomenal. Shout out to Buddy Matthews, by the way. We do have his interview here in All Elite Zone, by the way. I'm not going to lie. Mercedes is completely boring in AEW. She hasn't helped anything with the women's division like people were hoping for. Uh, Mike, um, I, I will say that I'm shook that there hasn't been as much wrestling out of her as I was hoping. Uh, but I can't say anything definitive yet because it hasn't been that long. But That's true, yeah. Why ain't you wrestling <laughs> more? I mean, she, you know, she just got there, you know? Yeah, but it hasn't been that long. So you can't really say anything definitive yet, you know? Rosa's in here? Rosa's in here. Yeah. You're safe. Yeah. The best of the worth waiting. I I love your opinion on that, King Solid. Oh man, Brody's landing in too. It's like a sledgehammer hitting somebody, man. That when that force hits your chest, with pow. Right? It's a monster of a man. Beautiful combo. I wonder if I can put this back a little bit and get to where you are. Oh, man. Well, I'm, at, I'm at the point where Birdie goes flying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh. You miss me, young Mike. I just want to know what happened to the hand. We all got nothing away. The hand? Yeah, Mark Henry and 
Yeah, my young was something else. <laughs> it's dramatic that we're messing is not longer than 20 minutes. Tony has wasted time and money. Longer isn't necessarily better. Hmm. Oh, Seidel is on fire. He is so. Yeah, sure is justice too, indeed. Oh, damn. Oh. That was a yeah. stiff kick from Malachi. <laughs> Damn, they're working stiff as hell tonight. Oh, up and over. Look at Sidell go. Oh, he took that one. Oh, he took all of that one. Oh. Rain and we got picture and picture, folks. You better not tap outside out. Don't be a bee. Not doing commercials. <laughs> At least not doing commercials. Oh, yeah, they view on a different um, thing than I do. Yeah, over here we we're on commercials. It's 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 a uh, picture in picture right now. We'll get picture in picture eventually. It happens at weird spots, but the thing I love about picture in picture is when they start pinning people, you're like, it's not gonna, it's not gonna happen now. I mean, but at the same time, it's also not good about picture in picture because it kind of loses a little bit of suspense. But yeah. I'd also rather have picture in picture than watching it with commercial break in between and you're like we're back and all this happened while you were away exactly <laughs> like what if something big happens <laughs> exactly like there's really neat spots and sometimes there's subtle things that you miss and it's it's you know i prefer actually seeing it I, I, yeah i agree Brody is just throwing Sidell like he's just a, a sack of potatoes. That's crazy. And the size difference is nuts. I like when he picks him up by the back of his pants. They're like, oh, he's just like a little kid. Oh. You doing okay? Great, pal. Buddy's phenomenal. I, you know what? I was never like, hey, it was for me, it was he just didn't fit, right, with the group. And now it's, he's slowly thrown on me. Oh, hi, Chico. I think there's a lot of people that felt that way about Buddy, but I think it took time. It took time for him to mesh in with the group. Right? I mean, I just think that he's just so, like, naked in comparison. I think that was it for me. I was like, you don't look like you fit. And then you start, you know, like, with the group and how they work together, and you're like, okay. And then, like, the promos and stuff, you're like, okay. Just because your skin is naked. 20 minutes in a couple of markers. I'm not just sitting with this. <laughs> <laughs> that always looks so neat. Dante, you're so neat. I always get nervous when they go up top. <laughs> Especially, I, especially Dante. Dante, I trust well, you. It's always a risk. It's always a risk going up there. Right? No matter, no matter how, you, how professional they are, it's always a risk. Mm hmm. Hi, Finn. What's up? What's up? Wow. Jeez. <laughs> Dante oh, jeez. Oh, my God. Look like Matt just landed on his head with that reverse with that reverse hurricane. Rana. Dante, 
I say if anybody's gonna take the pin, it should be him. That's just my personal feeling. So. Hey, I'll give it to Matt Sidell. I'm sure he's his head's gotta be pounding right now. Are you excited for Dynasty? I am. Oh. Oh, man. Ooh. I swear, Dante is like a cat sometimes, man. He can just land on his feet no matter what. <laughs> Right, and the amount of time that he can spend in the air. You're like, how do you just hover? Like, right. I agree, James. I'm jealous you got to see that live. That's awesome. I don't know if we're yeah, gonna do a live for it. Probably. I hope so. I think so. I'm I'm not sure. I think I think Connor wants to do a live. I would sure. imagine. Hi Hank. Welcome. Ooh. Everybody's flying everywhere now. All right. <laughs> I kind of feel bad for Maxim Hydrity on the bottom of that little dog pile. But then I remember who it is and I don't feel bad. That's true. He's got so much potential. That's the thing. I just, why? Why the bottle of water? Why? Oh, snap. Triple kick. That was very well timed, actually. Ooh. Oh, what damn. Was that? <laughs> oh, goodness. Oh, they're all getting their shit in now. Good night, sir. Oh, man. <laughs> Jeez. They're like beating the hell out of each other tonight. That's awesome. The crazy thing though, after Jay White and Side L match, the two S brothers telling us going on in one place like you claim Oh, no, I totally didn't see that at all. Let's have to check that shit out. <laughs> that's that's pretty. I don't. That air? I didn't. I don't remember it, Aaron. I was pretty sleepy. Um, after the Jay White and Matt Seidel match, uh, the Ass Brothers apparently challenged each other. And then they claimed come out. I don't remember that. Another, that was like a dead sleepy. Another triple kick. I love it. They're just throwing everything at Brody. I mean, <laughs> just like, gotta kick, gotta keep him down. I love it. That's awesome. What do you think about uh, this, um, Mr. Jacobs? The Jack Perry staying in New Japan? I mean, honestly, I think either way, I think if he was to either stay in Japan or come to AEW, I think. I think he can make money anywhere he goes right now, honestly speaking. I mean, he could write his own check, honestly. Oh, yeah. I think he should come back in Chicago. <laughs> I should come back in Chicago. Ah, that's that's not bad. <laughs> Ooh, did not air. Cool. He can come out to Justin Timberlake's Crimea River. Oh, my God. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, it did not air. Okay. Hmm. Happened after they went off air. Um, oh, cool. Well, that's awesome. Some of the funniest stuff happens off the air. That's <laughs> Okay. House of Black destroyed it. Heck yeah, they did. With the W. Rated R. Let's show you rated R. That was a good line. <laughs> oh, I think we might be getting commercials on this end now. Ah, that's okay. Fairly good so far, though. Yeah. And I like that Tony promo. What are you watching it on? I think oh. um, they're on YouTube TV or Peacock. I do love the I do love how they're kind of working with stardom. Cool. I really enjoy that. I feel like it's gonna be good for Athena as well because she needs more yeah. people to fight. It's a crazy it's crazy in a week the shield lose the world title titles and won a world title. Oh yeah, because Seth and, and Mox. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yep. You're not wrong. What well, a fun fact. Uh, that Roman Reigns title reign was longer than the Attitude Era. That's a true fact. That's actually hilarious. I never thought of it like that. I never put it into that kind of perspective. <laughs> bottom. I love how she says bottom. <laughs> oh my gosh. Everything that comes out of Tony Storm's mouth is golden right now. She's so ridiculous. It. Just <laughs> I love it. It's so amazing when you're there uh, watching it live to see what actually happens during uh, when there's commercials on air. Heck yeah. King and I went to Dynamite, Rampage, Collision, and a Ring of Honor taping. It was pretty awesome. That is pretty awesome. All in a week's time. It was in a week. It was two different shows, though. One was one was in a different city, and one was in our city. But it was so good. It was so much fun. And I would go again. But when they come here next, they're going to be like five or six hours away. And I really don't want to adventure that far. So far. <laughs> well, that's understandable. Unless we got, like, mm hmm That's worth flying for. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I said fly because that's what we're at. We'd have to borrow a vehicle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm going to need fucking wings on my car soon. My wheels are, are almost not there anymore. I know. That's why I was like, I don't think B would make it. <laughs> mm hmm. Uh, we like you too, Ron. Hell yeah. Thank you for coming out. Welcome aboard. All these food commercials give me the munchies, man. I don't know why they decide to do that all the time. They play the play like a cluster of restaurant commercials at the, at the same time. Like, you know, you want to, huh? mm -hmm. That's why I'm eating candy. I always bring candy. I actually have a Snickers somewhere. I just forgot where I put it. <laughs> How do you feel about Hook wanting to test free agency? Um, I mean, I, mean, I, I don't know. can only grow yeah, by going I mean, on and experiencing stuff. I mean, look at it now. Right now, I mean, he can write it. He, he's, he's kind of a... The topic. I mean, he can go anywhere and make money anywhere, uh -huh. whether it be independent or professional. To do with his with his name, he can he can walk in the door and make money. 
No, I think I think that would be interesting. I would really love to see what he did like out on his own. Yeah. It's like a, a new chapter to his story, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Yeah, kind of like Wednesday they had Ring of Honor to start off with, and then they had the Dynamite and Rampage in one of these days, and they may have a collision. Ooh, that'd be cool. Hmm. Mr. Jacobs is not himself. <laughs> <laughs> That's very true. <laughs> I'm a candy person. I eat a lot of candy. Gummy bears. So many gummy bears. I'm a Sour Patch Kid kind of person. I I, I love Sour Patch Kids. Anything sour, really. But my go-to is Sour Patch Kids. If I'm gonna eat something sour, mm. either that or Sour Skittles. <laughs> Ooh, Sour Skittles are good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Lee Moriarty and Shibata. Aww. Buddy behind Lee Moriarty in his flamingo shirt does not like him. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and we just witnessed about to pick a wedgie. <laughs> what a good day this is. <laughs> <laughs> a day in history. I like watching Shibata wrestle. He's always very, I call him like noodly. <laughs> noodly. Noodly. Well, because he kind of like snakes around people and like gets these uh, such awesome yeah. holds on people in ways that you wouldn't think. And you're like, oh, look at that. Like how, like, I don't know. The guy is amazing though. He kind of reminds me of, um, oh, geez, he's an old school wrestler. I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, yeah, I'll, he'll come back to me, but he reminds me of this old, old, old school wrestler, like back in like the 50s and 60s. Oh my gosh, I would have no idea my brain is melted. House always wins. It was a solid match, Chris. What did you think of it? Frank Ganya, that's his name, Frank Ganya. There you go. See, I have no idea. It's above me. Does it chat? You guys are way more educated than I am. Then I suffer from mad burnout brain. He like this is nifty. What are you doing, bro? Yeah. Where did he pull? Wait a second. Where did Lee pull that that mouthpiece from? Never mind. Never mind. Oh. <laughs> Got an inner pocket. That's nature's pocket. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I'm I'm not even gonna ask anymore. <laughs> I was I was really hoping you were gonna say that you weren't gonna touch that. Because <sighs> like, well, he didn't ask, <laughs> but I mean, it's so close. <laughs> <laughs> It's a hell of a leg lock right there, though. Yeah, that's what I mean about like the noodliness. Like, what do you? That's impressive. Bro, 
real quick. Is it funny that I was Ooh. like thinking that this was a pure match? But it's totally no. not. It's not. You're not. But they're, they're doing some legit wrestling for a change. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm, like calling out rope breaks like they fucking matter. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. I'm so sorry, guys. That was my bad. Oh, here we go. Did a recording inside the center Wednesday night during the punk video segment. It was crazy. I bet it was. I can <laughs> imagine the reaction to him live. Oh. Boy, howdy. It's going to be a thing for a bit. I just hope it's all done with. I feel like this is the time that it should be done with, right? Like, what more can you say? We are done. I agree. I agree. It's, it's you know, what's done is done. It is what it is. Yeah. Although Jack Perry is definitely going to ride that right to the bank. I he mean, hell, I would. Hell. He is riding that right to the bank. I mean, I would, too. That's, like, free publicity. All publicity is good publicity. Like... <laughs> Yeah, do it the right way. He could become a millionaire if it's not our, if he isn't already one. <laughs> exactly right. All in how you play it. That is an interesting stretch, Mister Moriarty. Oh. Stay out of that one. Go, 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 go. Oh. Damn. You heard Jack Clare he plays the Mega Millions? What's that? Oh, that's lottery tickets down here. Uh, <laughs> I have awful luck. Um, I literally, in, I don't call them scratch and wins. I call them scratch and loses. Um, but... <laughs> It's really nice when I do win because to have the attitude of, you know, it's okay. I'm just mm -hmm. playing this for fun and I'm used to losing. And when I do win, it's like, yay. Yeah, I mean, every once in a while I'll buy a ticket, but it's it, it like for me, if I get into it, then it's like one of those things where I'll get obsessive over it till I'll, I'll keep buying one until I get, get a big winner. And I, exactly. I don't want to throw my money away like that, you know. Yeah, like I, I'm the kind of person like I, I don't buy lottery tickets because you just sit and wait to see the numbers. Yeah, I'll buy the scratch tickets that are like the crosswords or something if I feel like a scratch ticket. It's something to do, you know, not like this one that just or unless I just want to buy like a dollar ticket. That you just up. But like if I actually want to buy one, it's usually something to do, not yeah. like just to, you know, I hope I win because gosh darn it, I don't usually win. <laughs> So. Right. I mean, the thing is, plus down here, if you do win something big before you get it, a huge chunk of it's taken away from, t by, you know, taxes and stuff. So you, you barely get what you win. I don't think it's like that up here. I was like that down here. They want I their know cut it down is. <laughs> I was like, that's unfortunate. <laughs> like, <laughs> Government wants their cut, man. Yeah, they always do. I mean, up here, they're trying to tax a tax. That looks really good. Hmm. That that girl there with the cell phone just got a wicked shot. Oh, was recording and that yeah. Oh, yeah. I hope it was recording too. Ooh. Well, now they're now they're getting violent. <laughs> I love the progression of the match too. How it started off with the technical wrestling, you know, yeah. the, so now it's it's gotten to where it's going outside and throwing in the tables, and it's it's awesome. I like the progression of it. It's very. Cool. I love it. 
I always love Chibata's matches. I really do. He's a very impressive guy. And Lee Moriarty has been surprising me more and more lately. It's not It's not that he was never good. It's just I feel like they didn't, he didn't get the showcase. A while ago he did. But that was like two years ago when he was really getting a little bit of a push. Mm-hmm. Ooh. I'm taking a bathroom break and I'll be right back. Good. I like the jab chop. That was neat. You think that Anthony is a really good fit for Shane Taylor promotion? Yeah. I think it adds another style of wrestling. To I think it'll be good. Plus, it is the most of ROH. I love ROH. I am not shy to say that that is my favorite promotion currently. Although it does change from time to time. All right, I'm definitely learning to do it. Ooh, that looks neat. Oh. Oh, and Shabazz laying them in. Oh my god, that was a nice job. I like that they're just kicking each other in the face. Let's <laughs> <laughs> just see another. I bet you, I bet you can hear those chops from the nosebleeds, man. Those right. Are <laughs> Nice abdominal stretch. You don't see that too often. I am excited that we get to see a Cena on a Saturday. I love her. Man, Athena's awesome. She is my favorite lady wrestler, I think, ever. Like, ever. I just, I love her. She's very inspiring. Yeah, she really is. She really well, is. And just, I just love her. She's a hell of a gamer, too. Yeah. Oh, gosh. And cosplayer. And she's just absolutely phenomenal. Like, I feel like if I ever got the chance to meet and hang out with Athena, I feel like I could potentially make a friendship with that woman. Like, because I feel like we may have some common interests. In fact, I know we do. Um, from from what she presents, anyway. Uh, so like, no, she's really she's really nice and approachable. That would be so cool. Like, I just I think she is one of the most amazing women in wrestling that I've ever seen, and she can pull off face and heel and like anything. Like, I just I just think she's absolutely and in in ring in ring her in ring ability in the the amount that she can put herself through and just keep going in a match. You're like, holy crap! Woman. Yeah, yeah. She's not very tall. <laughs> <laughs> Shibata's killing it, man. I think your gogo is looking so pissed off. <laughs> That's Honestly, hilarious to see. I like that he's with Shane Taylor promotion. 
He does look upset, though, doesn't he? <laughs> he looks uh, he looks pretty pissed. <laughs> oh. Oh come on! I knew I knew he was. I knew Jake was. I knew Taylor was gonna do something. I knew it. <laughs> just could he just couldn't help himself. Oh, who comes to save the day? That's what I'm saying. Well, right now, has been on a little bit of an hour. No, you're right. Um, lost to oh. uh, Diana. Or was it? Who is Diana? Hell yeah, look at MIT. <laughs> I don't know if they've updated the ring. The ratings on what? I'm not sure what happened to Sheeta, honestly. Yeah, I've, I've been wondering that myself. She didn't suddenly disappear. She was on ROH, feuding with Athena for a mission just a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's okay, yeah. And Athena kicked her butt. Mm. <laughs> And Damn. I agree that Lexi needs a title. If Lexi ever started wrestling, the pop that I would exhibit would be just so insane. Like, <laughs> I love Lexi Nair. She has so much charisma. I'm like, she's magnetic. I just love her. That's what I mean. Like, the talent that they have right now. I mean, how can you not be impressed? Oh, gosh. They're just absolutely amazing right now. That's the thing. I do wish there was a little bit more of a brand separation. Just a smidgen. Mm -hmm. Not like a whole Raw SmackDown like complete separation. But I, I want the... I, I'm with everybody kind of feeling like I want the shows to feel a little bit different. Um, yeah. I do like that uh, Rampage had pretty much as many matches as Raw did. But Raw is a three-hour show. All right. And, and I like that about about Rampage. It's just like a packed wrestling. It's just wrestling. It's pretty much the entire thing. It's just match, 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 match. Um, but Collision and Dynamite had started, uh, had been starting anyway recently to feel very similar. But I'm hoping that that kind of gets mished up. But I love their roster right now. It's so stacked. People are talking about people they should pick up and I'm like, ah, I don't know. I can't think of anything. I agree. I think they should work on what they have right now and, and, and focus on that, hone that. You know? Well, yeah, and there's so many other companies out there right now that, I mean, now is the time that other companies are also thriving. Like, T and I mean, mm -hmm. people are growing. Wrestling is, as the, I mean, I hate to say it, as the Rock said, wrestling's cool again, and I'm totally down for it. Like, Yeah. I mean, it's an evolving thing. It goes, it's like a roller coaster as well. It goes up and down, has its ups and downs, you know. Exactly. Just got to be along for the ride, as they say. Big Bill is very lucky. Why is Big Bill very lucky? Because anyone may sign the rock. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Big Bill has gone through a lot in his life. I mean, he probably would call himself lucky to be alive. You know? <laughs> I mean, valid. I was just wondering if there was like a current thing that is happening at this very moment. Um, Sky I'm not Blue sure. and oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. You. Oh, I was just gonna comment on the Sky Blue and Julia Hart are the yeah. only two for you. And I was like, Psh. oh, you go ahead, go. <laughs> oh, um, Chris said Sky Blue and Julia Hart are the only two for me, and I was like, Psh. there's so many lady wrestlers out there. I can understand the point. Well, yeah, I agree. There, there are a lot more, a lot more out there. But those two, they, they, they are standouts. They are very much standouts. 
especially with Julia Hart's video packaging that you did recently. That was so awesome. I keep thinking, I have to think that that Black has something to do with that. Like Malachi has something to do with the production and the in the the vibe of I, I, it's it's pretty cool how they do that. The production value has really really went up. I agree. I mean, and if you follow her on any of her socials and stuff, she does do a lot of like even just creative photo shoots. It really seems like she's coming into her own a lot more. Um, and yeah. I, I attribute that a lot to being paired with Malachi. I I feel. I think being paired with Malachi is almost like working with Fraser. Well, yeah. I mean, the mind sense is very unique. He's very creative. Collision was better when it first started and kind of slow and boring some nights. Um, I feel that it had that brand separation when it first started. And there was a little bit of that friction back and forth, which made it interesting. Yeah. But the thing is, I have faith in it all. I mean, oh, gosh, I me think too. that I think I think all he has to do is really delegate really. And, and I think that's that's the one of the main issues is like finding help with the creative. <laughs> oh no! I totally agree. I'm I'm all about like I I'm at that point um right now where I watch so much wrestling and I'm just happy to watch wrestling. Like yeah, I agree. I'm I'm just happy and and I think it's a great time and I'm lucky to be able to be a fan during this time where there's so much content and it's everywhere and I'm happy. And it's, it's so again, it's easily season. accessible as well too. It is easily acceptable or accessible. And I think it is true that Dan Housen is a demon. <laughs> He's the best demon. <laughs> right. Who's engaged to Lexi? Yeah, that's who who's engaged to Lexi? Big Bill. Oh, Big Bill. It is oh, Big Bill. That's yeah. why he's lucky. Okay, I get I it. I get it. Yeah, you're right. He is a totally lucky man. Good call. <laughs> oh, thank you, Davis. I appreciate that. That we was a killer fun. interview. And thank you, Mr. Jacobs. It was so fun. They were very sweet. Did you know that, Mr. Jacobs? That Lexi is one of DDP's daughters? What? Are you telling me a oh, lie? That's did... true. That's that's true. That's what? Really true. No wonder she's so GD charismatic. My gosh. Well. I enjoy Rampage every week, um, James, as well. I like it because, like I said, it's just, it's usually just a lot of wrestling. It's just tons yeah. of wrestling on an hour. And you know, one thing that I've noticed is that, you know, it's true. There are people that'll talk down on it, but a lot of the people that talk down on it don't even really watch the product. They just see clips and stuff and they read I, stuff on Twitter and they run with that. I hate that, Mr. Jacobs, and I agree. I see that a lot. Um, I, I really, I'm one of those people that, well, for example, all my friends read the Twilight books when I was in high school, and I made fun of them a lot, and they told me I couldn't make fun of them until I read them, so I read them all, and then I made fun of them, but ed with educated jokes. Um, <laughs> you know, I will go out right. and I will watch something to, to show you that I don't like it. If I wind up liking it, awesome. But like, right. I can usually tell if I don't like something, but I will watch it to make sure, and so I'm educated on the product to tell you why I don't like it. Like, exactly. You'll give it a day in court. Like exactly everybody gets one right like i'll watch it i'll check it out but like nine times out of ten i can tell you why i'm not gonna like something but i don't like people who just don't watch it and they're like oh well because of this and it's like but have you sat down and get gave it a shot no right I got Garcia on this. I have to. You have to. Oh, yeah. I, I got Garcia on this as well. 
you have to win. But I was like, but him and it, wait, the last time that he went up, him and Serpentico went up against uh, the baby boys, did they win? They lost? Well, they might win. <laughs> hmm. Where has Angelico been? I haven't seen him in a while. Ring of Honor. Oh, he's been a Ring of Honor. He's with Maria Canellis' baby boys. She's really gross. Hmm. Oh, my sequence there. I agree, game. Oh, you're not wrong at all. No, I can't. I, I can't argue with that one. <laughs> Right? Like, and I understand not having, having like, time for everything, but don't outwardly bash something if if you haven't given it a shot. And, um, I mean, if you're, if you're curious about the stories, I mean, you got to watch the whole story. <laughs> exactly. Ah, they're kick fighting. That looks so silly. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that was a nice chop. And now, Joe, right, here. Back the other way. No, welcome, welcome. He's back. <laughs> so, Pinto goes going nuts out there. <laughs> he is so awesome. He can get the crowd so hyped, though. I love oh, him. Man. He's entertaining as hell, I gotta admit. He is. And same with Don Cruz, which is, I mean, the same gentleman. Honestly, John Cruz, his facial expressions, it makes me wonder why he ever put a mask on. Because, like, his facial expressions in ring are so freaking priceless that I'm like, oh, my gosh. But I guess now you can wrestle twice on one show. That's a double right. paycheck, you know? Like, that's pretty solid. <laughs> it's not, probably, not a bad way of looking at it. Right? It's probably because his record is so bad that I mean, he I needs he needs to create a whole new <laughs> character just to not look embarrassing. You know? Like he's almost at 175 losses. That's a record. That kind of <laughs> but he has a uh, that kind of added more wins to his. I who one knows I keep up with that stuff. Wins and losses. They added some lo some wins that he never won to. Uh, I guess not make his record look as bad. But if they were going by his actual record, he would be. 11 and 175. Hmm. But, I love I mean, him. But I mean, it makes uh, it every time he wins, it makes it that much more special. It's like the opposite <laughs> of Goldberg. Yeah, exactly. I remember when, I remember when he started out, and uh, no one probably will know this, but Oliva 8 in New Orleans, that's where he, that's where he started out at. Hmm. Or I don't know if that's where he started out at, but he was, he was a coach there, and that whole place shut down, I guess. I don't know what happened. That's ridiculous. Now we got Angelico. No one in AEW has seen what he's capable If anyone wants to see what he, he can really do, I would say just watch Mucha Underground. And Angelico oh, yeah. is really, 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 really good. He can be an international champion, a TNT champion. He, he could be a champion in AEW if they would allow him to show what he can do uh he is he is basically he was the jeff hardy of Luke underground like he was diving off of everything yeah i remember he dove off the the, the building the set because of the yeah, set it was like a building i remember he dove off of that i was like that is nuts like that's what really got a lot of people to know who he was by doing stuff like that did you guys watch tna yeah, I watched a little TNA. I didn't watch as much as I should have, but I watched a lot of it. 
I watched like the, like the early TNA. But no, 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 no. I meant like this like most early. recent. Oh, recent. I've been watching a lot of the recent TNA. I've been uh, watching. I need to catch up. I've been trying to catch up with the ones that I missed so I can get to the ones that are now out. Because mm-hmm. I don't like to watch. Like, if I've missed several weeks, i got to rewatch everything that I've missed to get caught What's back the story? Up. Yeah. I get that. So I, do know, uh, I do know uh, finally Alexander Hammerstone got signed. Him and Josh Alexander's going against each other at the next pay per view or whatever it is. They're tied 1 1. Hmm. It should be. I think Hammerstone's really good. Really good. I'm glad that they finally. Pulled out some money and signed him. But TNA's got a lot of good wrestlers. They got uh, they were recently re-signed Ace Ace Austin. Buddy Live. I missed hearing that. <laughs> Garcia needed that one. Exactly. Got 18 people in here. Thanks everyone for uh, coming and watching uh, AEW Collision with us. We'll be also be doing Battle of the Belts as well. We appreciate it. The bastard so much. Oh, his promo gave me the shivers. He's so good. Makes you wonder how WWE dropped the ball on him. How they get? How they do that? They named him Neville. Up that <laughs> at the yeah, end of the whole thing. <laughs> at the at the end of his WWE, he was basically Pac. He grew the beard. He had his hair. He turned heel. But he was uh, he he would only go uh, as high. Like the only thing he would do, like the peak for him in WWE was the cruiserweight title. Like that was his yeah. peak. Well, with Vince McMahon, that was. I think he won the next Q World title. Um, on the main roster, he. I mean, he had a lot of good matches with Jericho, and the one that I can remember is Seth Rollins. He he had Seth Rollins beat. Like, that was a three count. I still, to this yep, day, yep. Neville should be your WWE champion. He beat Seth Rollins. The referee screwed him out of that. I think if they put out a shoot on Tony's OS, I would say. So who is Tony Storm? He has to be tonight? wearing the Tony gear. Is Tony going against the person that was on uh, Dynamite from Stardom or whoever it is? Mina? Uh, I think so. I'm not sure. I think it's that person that uh, – it really should be Anna Jay versus her because she kind of costed Anna Jay that match. Mm-hmm. I love the Stardom Girls ring gear. I'm like, I would wear your ring gear outside as everyday clothes. Like, like this is, this is, I would, I would wear that jacket. This is the cool thing about Stardom is that they each have their own kind of eclectic style and kind of they stand out and kind of, it's really cool. How does this make sense? Wasn't she getting beat up by her last night on Rampage? Or Dynamite, wherever it was. I think it was Dynamite. Lady. How is all of a sudden she coming out with her? <laughs> How does that make sense? <laughs> I, I could have swore because Mariah May and her was together. That's, that's a different one. Oh, this, this is a different one. The one that was smooching them? That, that one was Mina, right? That one is Mina, and this is Izumi. I was gonna say, uh, I think so. Hey, no way, like you must have had a. If you step on my but, keyboard, I yeah. swear to Christ. This makes more you sense. The now. cutest pair of mucklucks I've ever owned. They got that dude referee, man. <laughs> I've never seen a referee that short. That would be funny seeing him try the referee like Lance Archer or Brian Cage, or that'd be that'd be interesting. <laughs> 
So you know, the shorter the referee, the bigger the rest, the bigger the, the, the wrestlers look, or the performers look. That's the, I think that's the main reason why they do it. Um, well, it, it it had a good meaning when they had the Continental Classic, and they had a lot of those good matches, and it it meant a big deal. Uh, I feel like Eddie Kingston really didn't have it as long as he should have. Uh, he could have used a little bit longer run, but they put it on, on they put it on Okada. Uh, Okada really hasn't done much with it right now. He's had a like he hasn't really defended the title much. He's in and out. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, it it means more than uh, I mean, it, I I would say the international means more than the continental, but. Uh, yeah, that could My be a little bit. Puddle is really more like he used it. It's like it's a joke right now, in a little bit, kind of, but it's it oh, kind yeah. of intentional. Like if you think yeah. about it, Okada came in, he got it. I mean, mm-hmm. he's part yeah. of the MVP buddy, you know. I mean, I, it's not like I feel Okada's you know, a good person to have that that kind of belt. Uh huh, one hundred percent. And Eddie did go and defend it elsewhere. I don't think that it's a nothing title. I think that they're using it in story right now. Which, yeah, Okada uh, hasn't had it that long, like two weeks, three weeks, two. Yeah, something like which Okada mm, actually, yeah. Uh, probably Okada's first title defense, and that's a, this is a pretty good match for us. You know, should be good. Here, good Moxley last night. I wonder how that went. <laughs> how did that go? Because I'm so used to like, I mean, I was refereeing. I was taller than the people that I'm refereeing. So these wrestlers like. Like as a re- as a referee, sometimes you're not supposed to see, see things. So then the heels go at you, and then I'm looking down at them, and they're so short. And it's just reverse with them. Like I would like to see a referee. Like if you if you went to an AEW show and seen a security guards, they got some pretty pretty jacked uh, security guards. I like to see a jacked person like that be a referee. Like that would be very interesting to see a built guy as referee. Really? It can't be bigger than the talent. It makes the talent look puny then. Like, that's never happened in yeah. wrestling. Like, You'd have to put him in like, yeah. a Lance Archer and Big Bill match and then get a guy like like Brian Cage, who's super jacked but not very tall. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's how you'd have to do it. I mean, because I think that's the main reason why they do that is have, they have shorter referees is to make the wrestlers look even bigger than they are. Right? It's supposed to be larger than life. Just the, yeah. Gigantic. People especially on television, that's the, it appears that way on television, especially exactly. That's why all the little stardom girls play. have the itty bitty little stardom rest. Yeah. This guy can definitely make uh wrestlers feel larger in life. <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, I want to, I want to, I want to referee more, but uh, you know, one thing in refereeing they don't they don't tell you is uh. Pick certain pants because one of these times you're going to slide in and you're going to split your pants. It, it's oh, a real that, thing that's oh, happening. That has to suck. <laughs> well, I don't... It, it, it happened to me once, but no one noticed. There's uh, also certain it, pants that if you go to slide in, if they're not yeah. like fitted properly or if you don't have knee protection, they will like friction burn your knees real bad. Oh, boy. Mm-hmm. Because what I like to do is, uh, I would practice just sliding in. It, like if you guys seen Charles Robinson referee one of the Undertaker's matches at WrestleMania, he ran all the way down the entrance ramp and just swooped in like it was oil or something on the ground. Yeah. He just swooped in. So I I used to practice doing that. So because in refereeing, like you really gotta be fast. Uh, referee like counting and stuff and so like that. So if it was like. So if they like clearly rolled someone over, I I would practice swooping in and sli- I would literally like slide in the ring and then one time, uh, let's just say, uh, pants didn't give up. They gave out. So. They didn't quite hold up to the side. Well, at least well, nobody I, noticed. That's what I mean. If nobody noticed, yeah, it never happened. Like, no one could tell. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it's definitely not the best feeling. No. Um, probably Okada will hold on to the belt until Omega returns. Hmm. We'll be waiting a while. <laughs> They'll be waiting a long, pretty good while, yeah. I, I remember uh, Okada, I mean, Omega saying he would possibly have to have surgery. Uh, but I don't know what 
where that's going to go. Or hmm. I remember Tony Khan was asked about it because they did their Canada tour and Omega was on some of the promotional stuff and he said that he wouldn't be at, be at any of them. So. Yeah, I feel... I don't know. I'm I'm kind of waiting to see what capacity he comes back in at this point. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I'll just be happy when he's healthy is all. That's where I'm at. Which he looks I agree. Now. He's, doing he's, healthy. Of, he's doing a lot of gaming streams right now and he's yeah. doing a lot of stuff. So. Which uh, he was actually at AEW a few months ago. Uh, he wasn't wrestling but he was doing his normal stuff like as an EVP. But uh, he yeah. wasn't. He wasn't well enough to. He was there for like two or three weeks in a row, and then after that, he couldn't. He uh, he wasn't well enough to come back. Let's take as much time as he needs, as long as he gets healthy. Mm-hmm. I like the back and forth. Like, the person to be the person to be Okada could really be Pac. He could be Okada for the Continental Championship. That'll be poignant. Yeah. I don't know if I'd do it at Dynasty, but because the card just he just won it, but um, it'd be pointless. I feel like I know what's gonna happen at Dynasty. And it's, if they're gonna if they're gonna bring this guy back, I don't know how they're gonna bring him back, but you know Jack Perry joined the new elite. That that's the only way they can bring him back. And him that's help. what I was thinking too. Yeah. So he would help Okada win, and he would help the Young Bucks win. Then you know you have Young Bucks, Okada, and Jack Perry as the new elite. Uh, that would be the best way to bring him back. So it doesn't make Pack look because realistically, I think Pack would beat Okada, but Okada just won the belt, so you don't want him to. I mean, they could have Pack win, but I just feel like he should have a little longer because Okada is a, uh, a pretty big deal to the. Uh, I guess a small audience that knows him, uh, and they're and they're trying to get people to know him. So, uh, yeah, I keep the title on him a little bit longer. It's kind of crazy that Tony Storm has elevated Luther's career. Yeah, man, that's crazy. I'm glad to see him having TV time. Luther was with uh, so Pentaco and well, first he was, he was with Randy Rhodes and Austin Kong. Then I didn't work, and then he was with Serpentico, and then that, that went no. He was he, he would probably have been released if it wasn't for Tony Storm. So Tony Storm saved his job. Yeah, well, Zumi is a little firecracker boy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a nice kid. He's actually a really good death match wrestler. If anyone has seen his death match stuff, so. he hasn't really done any of that in AEW, which I'm surprised he hasn't. I just love all the little attacky sounds that the stardom ladies make. Yeah. <laughs> like, you're so adorable. God. <laughs> that stardom is where, uh, that's where Asuka oh. and EO Sky started there. there <laughs> ooh, ooh, how uh, you Ronnie, thanks for watching. We uh, appreciate you watching. I'm doing pretty good. How's everyone else doing? Awesome. Thank you. Doing well. Oh. Yeah, there's uh not just wrestlers. Uh, from I'm not gonna get into that. I, there's not the time and place for that. But uh, yeah, Japanese women are uh, some of the, uh, <laughs> the Joshi wrestlers. Well, not well, they're wrestlers, but another type of wrestlers, I guess you'd say. Uh, but. I'm not gonna get into that. Yeah, they, they have that. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. They have that. Uh, it, it's a subculture over there. But if anyone knows who uh, Angela White is, then we know what I'm talking about. Somebody needs to send me a link for this. Angela White. Uh, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, I guess. That was pretty kind of weird, but all right, Tony Storm wins. That was a, that was a pretty nice match. match. So uh, whatever her name was is not going to This is Umi, I believe. I'm glad that Tony Storm is finally getting the title run that she deserved because her first title run was 
not really a title run. It was uh-huh. didn't really count. No, no, I had that was pretty. It was flawed. I'll admit it was. It was flawed. Was she licking her or sniffing her? I think both. Um, both. <laughs> the floodgates are open. I mean, stardom coming in. I think it's a good thing. I'd pay to see that continue. Lexi, that dress is so gorgeous. Also, not froze up anymore. You're good. And shout out to RJC, by the way. From what I hear, he's the one that came up with the whole timeless concept for, for Tony. I love that. I think that's great. Mm-hmm. Oh, Lexi. <laughs> Red Velvet is pretty sassy. I wouldn't mind anything. I'm laying you out. Because I'm not a stranger to main events, title pictures, or high profile matches. So tonight, I'm going to make an example out of you and show you and everybody else why it was a mistake. Yeah, she did stir it up a couple times. Way too many. I think, like, at least one or two too many. I get it that that's her thing, but that was like the one promo that Queen Aminata yeah. cut, and like not all of her promos, but like the one where she she said "juicy" like thirty times. I I was like, okay, I get it. <laughs> that's your thing, and I like it. I like I like it, but not that much. <laughs> like you know, Red Velvet was really nice. Too much juicy. I, mean, I like Red Velvet. She uh. I know she's had a lot of bad matches before. Uh, there have been some matches I mean, where it was the worst on TV, but over time, it's really uh, progressed. Yeah. And, I mean, she's a lot better than Rina Shavir. Uh, I'd much rather have Red Velvet than Rina Shavir on TV. Uh, I like Red Velvet. Yeah, she's really good. She's not like Jamie Hayter level good, but she's. Uh, I think she could be a TBS champion, probably, or... You know, if 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 they ever had AEW women's tag team titles, I could see Queen Amadonna and Red Velvet teaming up. Uh, hmm. That's a thought. Yeah. I don't know what they call themselves. Angela White. Um, just look it up, and you'll see. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> it has something to do with uh, Japanese women, kind of. Kind of, mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. Yeah. On Wednesday night, I wish Layla Hirsch was better with Julia, and not like a job match. Woo-hoo. Well, I believe Julia Hart got injured in that match, and they cut the match short. Mm, damn. Because, like, I was watching last night, and I was like, because like the match was over, and then I then they would show something else, and I was like, did they just skip through the match? Like, what happened? So I went back and like it was like a three minute match. Like it was very very short. Whatever happened, they they called the match home and they they ended it. Uh, yeah, sounds like it was right. What's that? Oh, oh, her shoulder. It looked like her shoulder anyway. Uh, I. I definitely wouldn't be watching every every time she came on. I, I turned <laughs> off. Well, then I turned back on. Your wish on a lot of people. Like this don't is put gonna, that even on. Don't put that even on the AEW, Johnny. <laughs> I mean, she needs. Uh, I mean, it was we had Kevin Bonner. He said catering is the best place in AEW. She can make herself at home, eat. <laughs> don't don't come anywhere near the ring. Stay there. You can sell some mashed potatoes. Anything. Yeah. Kind of like, uh, don't touch anything. Just stay put. <laughs> or really, just, just don't even come to that. I mean, I'm sure Tony would pay her not to do anything. I mean, he, paid, he pays Paige Van Zandt to not do anything. Hey, yeah, good still, point. I'm surprised she's still with AEW. 
Mark Briscoe. <clears throat> newly, I love Mark Briscoe. Newly crowned. Wisdom says the violent take it by force. Now let me tell you, Eddie Kingston, Adam Copeland, and Mark Briscoe, we some violent men. In that dynasty, we bring in violence, baby. So heed my advice, House of Black. Be afraid. Be very afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love it. That was awesome. She walked up on watch her walk off the back stage. She was walking. I don't know what it was, but I I seen that uh, normally their matches aren't that short. Like AW doesn't have three minute women's match, especially Rampage, unless it's like someone like in action. Like Thunder Rosa in action is automatically a squash match, but yeah, it's okay, not injured. Because uh. I wish that, that that match would have went on a little longer because uh, I really like Layla Hirsch and uh, right before she got injured, she was getting a bit of a heel push. So hopefully uh, we we'll get to see more Layla Hirsch and AEW. Never lost the AEW women's no, She should just let Tony Wolf on you then. <laughs> Thunder, come on, we'll wrap it up. Um. <laughs> oh no, she she goes from talking about how she does everything on her own to like being a part of a team, and it's very all over the place, and it doesn't make any sense, and it's not landing for me at fucking all. Thank you for watching on TBS and TNT, and it's like she doesn't know what else to say. She's like she's no, rambling it's now. Bad. It's bad. It only gets worse, Mister Jacob. Oh gosh. Couldn't carry me as far as my passion did. So I had to heal. And that day, something died inside of me. She's, uh, I'm sorry, she's gone on a bit long for me. <laughs> it wouldn't be so bad if it had direction, but it doesn't. She's okay. bouncing all over. Yeah. Time. Yeah. I'm gonna do it. This Sunday. It was like she went out there without anything prepared and thought, hey, I could wing it. She was beautiful, by the way. I must say that. Ooh, shots of good. Shots of good Baker. Did a fan just yell something out? Are they doing the Bray Wyatt? Don't they? I don't know. Who looks like behind the Rosa? Okay, so the last 15 seconds of that was dope. She I'll give you that. She done I'll... without any of the in between. The last you better bring it back home. <laughs> pretty okay. I will agree. Made a big mistake on trying to erase this mask of my face. 
It was like they gave her a free segment in the middle. And and then and then had like a nice closer. Yeah. Which is really unfortunate because I like Rosa. I mean, I think she's a talented lady. Um, I just have not like liked a single promo or a- anything that she's done like speaking wise since she's gotten back. Mm. That's understandable, totally, honestly. It didn't sound like Thunder Rosa at all. Like that's not it how didn't it, really. Not Thunder Rosa. It sounds like it sounds like it was written for her to say. And like she just kind of forgot what she was gonna say throughout it all, just ran with it and kind of improvised. Yeah, it was a little jumbled, like it was all all oh, what she said, uh, like the end. It perfect. The yeah, opera should have just been out there instead of doing this. She should have just came out there and then said all this tooth on the rosa instead of. But the point got across. I totally get what she said. It just took a long way to get there. Yeah, yeah. The end was solid. The end was solid. Like the, I could have done without all of the like beep booping all over the place in the middle, and just got right to the end. Yeah. And what is this? No, I'm just kidding. If I can't get one Tony Storm, I might as well get the other. So next week, I'm so excited for that. The virtuosa. I think you're a Cindy on and Rodney. You know, it was a tag match, wasn't it? it Diana and Mariah. It was Rosa and Diana versus Tony and. Mariah. Mariah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this is the first time when I won. Where's Nigel McGinnis? I guess 2.0 is no longer a tag team. Really? Well, they, I th- like they have Andrew Parker doing the Soraya stuff, and then they have Matt Lee doing whatever he's supposed to be doing right now. Who's better on the mic? Oh, Young Bucks and FTA would not be a ladder match. Mm. I want to say I like Old Thunder, like Old Thunder. I don't, I haven't seen very much of Mercedes myself. Um, mm-hmm. I watched like a couple of her matches in New Japan, and I she hasn't been doing a whole heckin' lot over here, but her talking has been pretty good. Um, but Old Rosa was very awesome. Her promos were super, super clean, and they were great. Say, yeah. um, Mercedes Monet WWE could talk better than Mercedes. Sasha Banks can talk better than Mercedes Monet. Okay, um, yeah, that's true. Thus far, anyway. Right now, I've really seen end. her do anything. Like she just not much. I feel. I feel like the build is going to be worth it. Hopefully, like um, my partner King mentioned earlier, he goes, "I like, you want." That you wait for the best, right? Like you want to. It's gonna hopefully pay off. I mean, hopefully yeah. it's gonna be worth it, right? Fingers crossed, like, guys. It's looking like her first match. She's gonna win the title. Like she's not even gonna. Like she's not hmm. wrestling dynasty. It doesn't look like. So uh, hmm. her first match will be at double or nothing in a title shot. I don't like, like that geez. at all. I don't. I already don't like that personally either. She's but just, you know. I've said many times, but she just, I feel like she just came to AEW so she can get more money out of WWE. Because she's getting more, because she's the most paid women's wrestler, I believe, right now. Mm. I believe that everybody's working together the entire time, and she, that's why she released tweets and stuff saying that she's going, she can't wait to go back to WWE, and she's still working for AEW and getting stuff done. It's all a, it's all a conspiracy. All of the neck beards out there think that they're fighting. Everybody's been working together since Vince is going around. <laughs> yeah, we've got heard it here first. Like this is the most she's gotten paid ever. So if she leaves and goes back to WWE, she's gonna get paid more money than what she is now. So that's not everybody's deal. That's uh, I, don't want her to I wonder if she gets any residuals from WWE if they're selling her likeness, yeah. Like, if unless like, they yeah. own her likeness, which, yeah, they own her likeness. I'm sorry, yeah, there's she probably gets nothing. Oh, well, that's true, yeah, yeah. Like, they brought back the ranking system, and you know. Shouldn't I feel like if you're going for a title shot, you should at least have a couple of matches to earn your title shot because 
I mean, we just brought back the ranking system for no reason. I should have never brought it back. Is, I think we'll that you should have put up matches anyway. Just ranking system be damned. You shouldn't just come into any company and win a title. Like yeah. every big man, like we said it before, like every big name has who's came in has had to work there. Like even Edge, like he didn't win a title his first match. Right. Like Okada did, but that was kind of different because he had wrestled in AEW a little bit, but just not as a signed talent. He wrestled at Forbidden Door a few times, wrestled on Dynamite one a few times. But it's also kind of healy that he did. And it kind of Yeah, it was very very much healy. He... So like <laughs> I, I believe Mercedes can talk. But then again, can she talk? Like was WWE writing all her stuff all along, and that's how she sounded so good. Have you seen any of her New Japan promos? I haven't. Take a look at those. Those, I mean, they're yeah. I don't know. You have you you make up your own opinion about those if you if you look at them, but they're not they're not bad, but they're not good either. Yeah, I did they're hear kind of in the middle. I saw now Peppermint or whatever her name is. She's uh, won a lot a lot of Emmy awards and stuff like that. Yeah, they uh, did. But they signed her not just the Mercedes rider, but she's the rider for the entire women's division. Uh, so oh, she's not okay. just doing Mercedes stuff, but she is. She did come in mainly to uh, like if it wasn't for Mercedes coming in, she wouldn't be coming in. Uh, but it's good that they hired her. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, she was with her in WWE, and she came with her to AEW. It's good that she's booking not just Mercedes, the entire women's division. Well, I wouldn't say booking, I guess, writing. Writing and booking is like her contract, she was given the title night. Yeah, that's, that was, uh, I wouldn't have agreed to that personally. Uh, How, what's the What's the duration of the contract? Like uh, years, a couple question. years, like two, three, something like that, probably. <laughs> okay, so anything more than a year, I would give her at least a title match. It doesn't mean she's guaranteed a title, but like right. having her in the company as long as she's wrestling at some point, you get her there, Mercedes Monet, there for two years, and she's actively wrestling and not getting a title match. People are going to start being like, What the heck? Why are you even there? So I could see it being included in the contract. Now, a title win in a like a one year contract may be a mm -hmm. little bit different because, like, first of all, it's only a one year contract. Are you going to be here to make that title run or like mean anything? But like, yeah. if it's a two to three year contract, I could see having that in there. She's a big That's enough a name. That you could yeah. that. I know she's done more than one year. Um, yeah. I've at least wrestled once or twice before uh, Dynasty, but some say that she's not cleared to wrestle, but she previously stated that she is cleared. So yeah. I don't know. Hopefully she does more. Because uh, yeah. right now, she hasn't really contributed a lot. And who knows, it might not even be on her. It could be that they're not using her. But I don't know. Hopefully, uh, by a year's time, by the time that she debuted this year, next by next year we see uh, a drastic change in the women's division, which we have been seeing a lot more story-based women's matches. Mm -hmm. You know, Deanna and Tony, and we're getting that a little bit with Tony and Thunder Rosa. Uh, so it's gradually improving. I saw some say don't want to be there. Uh, to get a I hate to say that, but that's probably true. <laughs> like the, yeah. uh, that's probably true. Debbie and Paul are going behind people's back from back door. Now, possibly they use Cody as the back door. I don't know. I don't know about I all that. I mean, mean, that they're all against each other. If you mean, I, I don't know. Honestly speaking, I don't think they're using Cody as far as like in any bad way. I mean, like. I don't know. It's all in your opinion, I guess. I, I, I don't know. It's up to you how you view it, I guess. Right? I mean, you can. everybody can stand and look from the outside and be like, this is what's happening and why. Um, but the beauty is at this moment, nobody really knows what's going on, and that's great. Exactly. 
personally, I've been saying it for like the longest time. I hope they utilize social media and make us all think that it's like, well, like what everybody thinks it is. And and it's really, they've all just been working together for a long time. You're like, yeah, look at these, look at these people. <laughs> look at them. I don't know. But like, I, I just, I like the idea that all of a sudden, all at the same time, everybody's been dropping mad heat. And it's been mm -hmm. like, not just, it's been names and like people are making direct shots. It's beautiful. All in the time that The Rock is coming back and Vince is going down, it feels like that attitude era and wrestling is become like, I don't know. It just seems very coincidental for me. Um, but I don't know. I don't but know. I think the, for, the, for the wrestling business as a whole, it's a hot time. It's you so know, freaking good, awesome right now. Better or worse, people, people are tuning in more. Yeah. Uh-huh. I love it. I love it. If we ever see WWE show up at Forbidden Door, we'll know that I've always been right. And if not, oh, you guys geez. just get to laugh at me and my sweet, naive little heart that, you know, that just wishes every wrestling company could all just get along. Like, I mean, if they would really... About WWE. If they would, like, they could really take advantage of what Mercedes is doing right now. Like, mm -hmm. she doesn't wrestle. She doesn't really do anything. She comes in, gets a title shot. Like, that's an outsider. So there you go. Blood and Guts, the homegrown versus the outsiders. You bring Britt, Britt Baker you and Jamie Hayter, then you can still do the outsiders versus the homegrown. There you go. That's, that's how you know that. I mean, let's not forget that Jordan Grace made, made an appearance in the Royal Rumble. Now, oh, I yeah. love that. The familiar door has been open and it's wide exactly. open. Yes, Mr. Jacobs. And they hit GCW as well. Did they not recently? Yeah, Shannon yeah. Baszler was uh, at UCW. The, the, the door that Triple H believes is silly has gone on record to say is silly. I feel like the only things that WWE will ever do is stuff like that. Like, they'll bring, like, someone from TNA over. Or they'll, like, have a... Like, that Shinsuke Nakamura go to Japan for Great Muda's last match. Yeah. Stuff like that. Like, GCW. Like, at GCW, they had a lot of WWE people that didn't even wrestle. They had William Regal's son, they had Shayna Baszler, they had, uh... Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just excited for this whole new Paul Levesque era or whatever that they're talking about. It's a whole new era, and I don't have any expectations going in, um, in a in a in such an open minded sense that I am prepared for absolutely anything. And please give it to me, like you know. Yeah. I don't know. I just I hope it's going to be different. I feel like the air is charged when it comes to wrestling right now. You have so many possibilities. Why not? Yeah. Yes, don't just give me anything, but give me everything. That is a perfect way to say it. That's, yeah, that's pretty. That's that's not bad. <laughs> that's I know the laws. The people that come across from his friend is, and has contact with me, and he can talk without getting to me. Well, I, I think if someone like Ricky Starks, who he's really good friends with, he was at WrestleMania. Like, if he really wanted to go to WWE, and he was like Cody, I really want to go to WWE. Like, Cody would probably help him get there. Uh, but I think Cody's like kind of like breach contracts or you know like trying to like get people to, like talking to people while they're on i don't think he's doing that but if, if, if a close friend of him said i want to he i want to be in wwe he would probably go out of his way to uh help make that happen because cody rose is, he's just that type of person you know like uh he's someone that you know like he helped train ricky starts uh, and a lot of that stuff AEW is awesome. Uh, right now, it's back and forth. You know, people's switched places. I mean, both of them. I mean, both of them lost people to TNA. Actually, Mustafa Ali, uh, Grayson. Uh, well, possibly Stu Grayson coming up. I hope he, he goes to TNA. Stu Grayson and the Ultimate X match can be really good. I've never liked Little Paul all the way. All the way back, but when he was the blue. Blood wrestler, he's anywhere. That could be found to be right. Who's little Paul? I'm, I think uh, Triple H. Paul, Paul of it. Triple H. <laughs> I, I thought, uh, like, are we talking about Paul Heyman or? Paul oh, Paul Heyman. I thought, he's talking, about, you know? I thought he was talking about Logan Paul big, first. Big, <laughs> big. Triple H was trained by. Uh, who's he trained by? Killer Kowalski. Killer Kowalski, yeah. Yeah, I watched like a mirror at the time and got to leave. The kind of trend that he had to go through, I wouldn't do that. See, some like a lot of trainers like to try to scare people 
and they don't want to be there. So yeah, they'll beat the hell out of you first, and then if you come back, they'll then they'll start training you. Like I, I was fortunate enough to not have to go through that. Like some training schools will just scare people, and then they don't come back. Like yeah. they'll just push them and. Uh, yeah, well, they like, do that to I, weed out the weak ones, you know. Like I, I heard a story of uh, Sergeant Slaughter and his first day wrestling training. You know, they they murdered him. Like, like they put him and doing stuff. Like his first day doing all this stuff and running the ropes and golly, like the next day he didn't even want to go back. But uh, who was he getting trained? He was getting trained by someone, but he uh, actually pushed. He actually beat up who he was getting trained by. Oh. <laughs> If there's one thing I can say with great, like 100% for sureness, is that I can totally take an ass whooping. Like 100% for sure. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, I don't think I'd be bothered by that kind of thing. Um, I, I mean, depending, I guess. I, mm-hmm. If it's a hierarchy thing, though, I don't know. It wouldn't be fun. <laughs> And at first, I I didn't want to be a wrestler. I, like, I didn't want nothing to do with it after my first few days. But uh, the more you get, more you stick with it, the less pain you're you're in. Oh, uh, see, I'm an itty bitty, a little bit of a masochist. So I mean, like, like first, I'll say the first three days are hell. You won't you won't look at wrestling the same ever again. I believe that, it. <laughs> that's what happened. Like I watched wrestling on TV all these years, and I've never booked wrestling the same again. Once I started trying to, once I got into wrestling and you know, for real, I never looked at wrestling the same again. Because it, it, it's not like what people think it is. It, it's a real cutthroat business. <laughs> people are. It. It's a. Uh, it's something. It's a definite experience. I think someone's ear get cut off. So, did, did I did I did I explain to you guys my new theory about how I just want everybody to all get along, and and oh, yeah. how and how I want to be the Bob Marley of wrestling, and bring everybody together. Who's and, and Bob try. Marley of wrestling? I want to be the Bob Marley of wrestling, except I can't sing. I have no rhythm whatsoever, and I'm way too white. But I want to bring people together. I do. I don't want people to fight about wrestling anymore. It's all just one love wrestling. Like, uh, I don't know how I'm gonna pull it off, but it's gonna happen one day. One day. That was funny if someone just came in on Saturday and heard her say, I should have. <laughs> James, you know me well enough. I say a lot of things that if people were to walk in without context, they'd have a. <laughs> So all ca- all Kyle Flug needs to do is get a few tattoos and he's Machine Gun Kelly. That's that's got to be the look he's going for. Machine Gun Kelly, <laughs> which I was oh, on Instagram. Man. I was on Instagram and he's liking everything of Machine Gun Kelly. So you know, I can see it, especially with the eyeliner that he did recently. I was gonna do a few tattoos, drink blood, and then <laughs> he did almost cry on was it Supercard? Is it yeah, um, when he when he won or retained on Supercard when he was going through his like after promo, um, but I feel like it was a very real, very emotional promo. Uh, it was about how he had been out for a little bit, and Buddy had commented that he just doesn't want to come to work, but he was having visa problems, and I think it actually like hit Kyle Fletcher because his response to it was very emotional, and it was like solid. It was solid promo work. I mean, it's probably all him. Wrestling is his life. You know? it, no, it, it was like it, he literally said that. Like he like lives and breathes like wrestling, and I it was so real. I was like, dude, dude, it was really good. If anybody hasn't watched it yet, they should totally watch it. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, do I have a dark side of the ring story? Yeah, I could probably tell a few. I don't know. If anyone would want to hear? I don't know if anyone would want to hear what I would have to say. Oh, well, I'm not. <laughs> yeah, like we all want to. Who doesn't love a good Dark Side of the Ring story? Yeah. 
Yeah, the one I haven't told this one ever. Uh, you know, in wrestling, the matches are predetermined. Uh, but I got pissed one time because they were changing finishes behind my back and didn't they were they wasn't telling me. So I go out there and think it's the finish, and I count. Th- it was a whole mess. Like I think they're gonna, I, like they're doing the finish. I think it's gonna be three, one, two, three, and they kick out at two. It's making me look like a fool. Everyone's, you know, don't want me to referee anymore, and all this, and the fans. And uh, they were doing it on purpose. I felt like because every single match it was happening. So I said, like I went to the promoter, and I never do this. Uh, what I did, uh, I went to the promoter and I said, uh, I can't remember the words I said, but I do remember saying, you don't know how to run a wrestling company. <laughs> <laughs> and I packed my stuff up. And I, uh, I can't remember a lot of stuff I said, because in the heat of the moment, you just don't remember what you say. But mm-hmm. they were, it was only me they were doing it to, though. Like every other referee, they weren't. Me right off. I don't like being singled out. I don't like bullies. I agree. Well, it sounds like they're ribbing you the whole time. Well, we were not. I think I was the only the only free there that night. If I can remember. Yeah, like the match was going perfectly fine, and I count the three, and he kicks out. I look stupid. They look stupid. We're in the ring. This match has went to hell. And <laughs> it, it was just a whole thing. It was. Uh, But I actually did referee an actual fight in the ring once. The, mat, the wrestling match in the ring turned into an actual real fight. Oh, man. It's cute. Yeah. I bet that was fun. Was, uh, I wouldn't want to be a part of that, especially on TV. I wouldn't want to be. But... I mean, but how do you, like, legit referee a real fight if it just breaks out and they just start going on like each no. other? I mean... How do Just you get in the middle of two in. big wrestlers? You know, it's like, it's, like a, it's like a chihuahua getting in the middle of two pit bulls, you know? I just let the fans think it was part of the match. I'm not getting in the middle of that and getting hit. <laughs> Hell like, no. <laughs> like what happened was he accidentally popped him in the mouth with his knee, one of the guys. Oh. And it was on accident, but he thought it was on purpose. So he comes back and punches him in the face, and then he punches him back, and then they actually go to – Punching on each other and biting each other, and then when the match was over, it continued in the back. Oh, a little bit, Danielson. Fun sight to see. <laughs> but it's fun to sit back and watch, though. <laughs> yeah, it, uh, yeah, it, it can get. I'm glad I don't have to do any of that stuff anymore. Like, I I got out of that one promotion. Uh, didn't have to go through all that stuff. Which it was a lot of stuff. I, I was part of the booking team. I booked wrestlers. It, it was a lot of things. Uh, but I don't plan to get into, want to get into uh, my local wrestling here. I think it'd be super fun, but I'm nervous. Actually, uh, mm-hmm. before the pandemic was going to happen, I was going to be refereeing like the TNA and stuff. And a lot of Stuff was gonna happen, but after when this, once the pandemic started, I kind of I, mean, I haven't stopped. I haven't considered like stopping doing it, but I don't really do it anymore because I just mm-hmm. I don't know. I guess I I, I probably would referee still if it was an opportunity to give him. But Jeez, typically, I, you're not retired, so you, yeah, you're just taking a moment. It's been a few years. Yeah, I'm definitely taking a moment. Uh, but. <laughs> I'm, I miss doing that stuff, but sometimes it can. Uh, being in the wrestling business can actually make you not like wrestling as you once did. Um, I've heard that. I get that. Actually, be a, actually being a part of it makes you not like it anymore. Uh, once things get taken too far, I can only imagine what they go through on TV and stuff. So not quite yeah. happening. Well, yeah, hopefully, live, live TV. I mean, it's, it's got to be nerve wracking. But the promotion I wrestled for, uh, at first, they didn't, they didn't have anything professionally set up. Uh, so, 
I imagine AEW is a lot more set up than what I was used to. <laughs> Can you not do that? Why are you not holding that, Mr. Hubs? Oh, that was a very horrible spot, guys. It did not look good. I did not like that at all. Where's my normal get at tonight? Is he normal tonight? I don't know. Oh. Because normally I'll, I'll like if, if if I hear Nigel McGinnis, I know I'm watching Collision. I don't hear him, so I don't know if I'm watching Collision tonight. All right, Tony. <laughs> <Well done. laughs> James just ended this match already. It, uh, there's been a couple of spots that could have been cool and then didn't quite. They should have made this match a tornado tag match. Like pretty mild times yeah, up there. Yeah. Pretty mild times they're outside the ring. Making a tornado match for them. Ooh. Oh, did you actually nut yourself, bro? Because it really looked like you actually nut yourself there. It looked like your foot mm. missed that little middle step. Uh. Mm. Not comfortable. <laughs> Not comfortable. <laughs> no, that really looked painful. Like, and directly down. No thigh in, you know. Ooh. Also, mention the body. Uh, if you haven't checked that already, uh, we had an interview yesterday with uh, Ross and Marshall Von Eric, me and Siren did. Uh, it's on the it's on the channel now. Uh, we uploaded, edited, it, it's on there. Uh, so if anyone watching and you guys haven't seen the interview yet, I definitely recommend going to watch it. Uh, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about some interesting things we didn't know. Uh, we talked about Iron Claw. We talked about how they got in the wrestling. Talked about their dad. Uh, and there was gonna be a possible, there was gonna be a Von Eric versus Dust versus Rhodes match in AW. Uh, and it was kind of shocking the way it all played out. Uh, I'm not going to say what it, what it is because I want you to go watch it. Go watch it, then come back, and we'll talk about it. Uh, but there was going to be a uh, Brian Erics versus Dustin and Cody match in AW. Uh, hmm. Not to toot my own horn or anything, but they totally said that I understand wrestling, so toot toot, motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, I do. Oh, you, to you, you totally get it. <laughs> it's so uh, good. Okay. We talked about uh, a potential matchup with Fred Eric's and FTR. We talked about uh, we've talked about a lot of things with them. So definitely go check uh, our latest interview out with Ross and Marshall Von Eric. They're very cool, dude. Very cool. I keep trying to clickbait. Well, not really clickbait because they actually did say it. Uh, the, the potential matchup with them versus Dustin and Cody. Uh, mm. I was, I was trying to make it seem like, you know, clickbait a little bit, make it more than it really was. But, uh, yeah, it's a very interesting uh, interview. When is Moxley coming back? I mean, he did just win a title. I imagine. Yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah seeing uh, that AEW has allowed him to take time off to do some New Japan stuff. I so, think that's awesome. He deserves to go out and do some fun stuff that he just wants to do. I'm you know, let him do his thing. If they want, they can take Jericho with them. No. Yeah, take Jericho with them. I mean, yeah, but I really <laughs> want to start getting into Japan. <laughs> he can stay. He, he can. Well, he can just go on Fozzy, do his Fozzy tour. And there you there. go. Wasn't he talking yeah. about that? When's that gonna happen? Well, that was supposed to happen before, like during Revolution. He wasn't supposed to be on Revolution. He was supposed to be on tour. But oh no, yeah. <laughs> come on back and ruin things. And like, no one sings his song anymore. No one. I like Jericho. He's one of the greatest of all time, but. You can't miss him if he doesn't leave. Is that what you're saying? That's 100% right. I was going to say that. I wouldn't miss him. <laughs> Does anybody know about this? I do not. Yeah, I, it was like a whole list of wrestlers that wasn't going to be able to come to AEW because of their visa issues. Really? Uh, 
Yeah, and there's a few of them. Get more Penta. There was a few of them that was that has been on AEW. I don't know whatever happened with that or what's going on, but more Penta. Pentagon. He's I mean, uh, because he wasn't able to be on the show that the CML had on, um, right? Like if they were on. Mm-hmm. I so, believe I, mean, so, I love but, Penta. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. That whenever they're on, Pentagon can't be on. Or, that's really petty, but uh, it is. I, I understand it only from a cat's like a super 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 casual point of view, like mm-hmm. like but you'd have to be such a casual that like why would it matter if you didn't understand like who was from what promotion, you know what I mean? Right. Like if you didn't get that Penta was on AEW and not CMLL, you know like why would it matter if you were that casual because if you're not a casual fan if you watch CMLL or you watch AEW you're gonna know who's on your promotion and who's not like, good. good point matter it shouldn't matter <laughs> like I don't know or it's coming up pretty soon May 5th is when Ray Phoenix is supposed to be cleared to come back so oh, great Miss Phoenix the trios division really needs to be weird Hopefully, Pentagon doesn't get injured. I hope not. Because it seems like there's always a curse. Someone's injured in the death triangle. It's either Pac or Pentagon or Phoenix. Yeah, there's a long history with uh, AAA and CML. Someone, oh, yeah. someone was telling us about that, and it's a long... It's fair to call it a war. <laughs> yeah, that's an actual war that's going on now. <laughs> yeah, that's still going on. Like we're about to go to Utah, and this thing is still going on. I actually want to. I know Danielson and Claude is probably going to win, but I'd actually like to see an upset and Kyle Fletcher and Hobbs get a win. I just got like this massive one two. I actually think if Kyle Fletcher and Hobbs would win, judging by what Fletcher has been doing with ROH, I I could. I mean, like, I would be behind it. I like Kyle Fletcher. Yeah, that's right. AEZ universe that I never thought that I would say that out loud. You guys are hearing it. I definitely do. I like him. I like him a lot now. I'm very much growing on him, especially now that he took off his flesh colored pants. Oh, pure strength by Claudio. Yeah. Oh, man. Damn. They are killing Athena it. Athena will be on. She is the main event for Battle of the Belt. So that's coming on after yeah. Collision. Stay tuned because we're going to be covering that as well. Yeah. Yeah. She'll be on. Uh... Plus, we got, got Roderick Strong versus Rocky Romero and Hook and uh-huh. Shane Taylor. And, of course, the main event, Athena and Red Velvet. I'm so stoked for Athena and Red Velvet. It's a great card, it. actually. What's a solid card. Oh, I personally man. wish they would have saved this Battle of the Belts till May. Because uh, Clue is going to be in Vancouver, and they've never sold 6,000 tickets for it. Hmm. And, like, the, like, it's fine until May, so they could probably got 7,000, 8,000 people. And, like, that's a lot of people for AEW. Uh, but uh, it's still, uh, I don't know, it, it probably wasn't even up to AEW. It was probably up to, uh, you know, the network they're on. So. Uh, I have to I do can't really do- games. This is the only match that I have found so far that has really dragged for me. And it's only because there, like I said, there has been some spots that I'm like, oh, and then they don't quite work out the way that I like them to. And I'm like, oh, well. And so now it's yeah, I agree. I think it's, I don't think it's that, I don't think it's a bad show. I think it's pretty, pretty decent. This is the only really... match so far that I haven't been like. I haven't gotten to watch the full show, but uh, the one match that I really did enjoy was Tony Storm and. Uh... Whatever name is. Uh, Azumi. Azumi. Yeah. Azumi. Yeah, that was a pretty good match. I, I enjoyed that. I agree. I though, love the stardom wrestlers. And even that Thunder Rose promo was kind of uh, wonky. It, she did, um, in certain points of her promo, she did do really good with. Uh, yeah, she she had the bullet points. She finally uh, talked about what she should have been talking about weeks ago. Uh, she brought up Comments of Rip Baker a little bit. Uh, mm-hmm. which I, I liked, uh, she probably could have, uh, I wouldn't say shorten it because I love more women on TV, but 
Uh, uh, made it more cohesive. Had better flow to it. Yeah. She was. She wasn't really like if 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 I was seeing that in 2022, I would say that's not Thunder Rosa. That's someone cosplaying as Thunder. Like they didn't. Certain points did sound like Thunder Rosa, and others that it, it didn't come off her naturally. No. No. But uh, but the the points that she needed to hit, she did hit. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's gotta be it. And the ending was solid. Like, like her delivery yeah. of the end of that promo was very, very solid. Yeah, she definitely brought it back home. Oh yeah, oh. for sure. Breaking news: They're going to continue this match all through Battle of the Belts. We're, we're going to cancel oh, all the Battle of the Belts matches, and this match will drag <laughs> on through Battle of the Belts. They're fighting on to the next show. That's kind. That's kind of awesome if you think about it. <laughs> oh, the catch that. Oh. Wonder if Will Osprey makes an appearance. I don't think he's so petty. <laughs> it goes Danielson. I mean, after that promo, though, I guess. <laughs> oh, he took it. Oh, oh, pretty stiff. Danielson won the match, but he didn't win the war. There you go. <laughs> got his ass worked, really. Claudia and Will Osprey, that, that, like that's a real dream match. Like, uh, you know what they did, Kenny Omega and Commander? Like, that's a dream. That's sort of a dream match, but like Will Osprey and you know, Claudia was something that really never would have think thought about. It's one of those matches where you don't really think about, but it's a dream match. Yeah. Like Keith Lee and Kenny Omega, a match you don't think about, but it's a... Uh... It's a match I love to see. Speaking of Keith Lee, he's a little fan. <laughs> I thought it was super neat that they kind of like showed him in the back um, during the WrestleMania weekend. Yeah. You guys know that he was uh, he sung the national anthem for WrestleMania. <laughs> people have been, I've been hearing people joking about that. I was like, I leave Keith Lee alone, man. <laughs> he he sung he sung the national anthem at WrestleMania. Keith Lee did. He sung he really really good. The brother, yeah, know, the Keith brother who sung it though sung the hell out of that song. <laughs> no, it was Keith Lee. That was Keith Lee. <laughs> I, I didn't know Keith Lee could sing that good. <sighs> No, it, w- it wasn't actually Keith Lee, but I, I was like, I wasn't paying attention for the like honestly the f- whole first like thirty minutes of that show. I was talking the stream because I'm like, holy jeez, like there is so much talking. Who's the? Are the Bella Twins? Garcia. Oh, the Bella Twins. Oh, uh, you talking good. about? I'm good. No. <laughs> nah. <laughs> But Nikki really isn't really uh, supposed to be wrestling anymore. I think she said that uh, with one surgery she had that she couldn't really mm-hmm. wrestle anymore. Hey, I appreciate that, Shabani. But uh, even knowing what Shane Taylor is capable of, I got some out tonight. <laughs> That guy, he's got to learn how to speak English. <laughs> he's, 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 a, he's a really good wrestler. And all he needs is he can talk a little bit, he'd be set. Like, uh, on, I don't know if anyone's seen, but on Dynamite, Okada yeah. finally started speaking, he finally started speaking a little bit. And in TNA, I, I remembered him talking a little bit. And if you can just work on his English, Okada could be a really big star. Like, he, he, he's got the EC3 look. I think a little bit of a Japanese accent is super sexy. Well, I I would say the TNA E3 look, not the talent. EC3's changed a lot. Well, look look up here as he has. Uh, But if anyone knows, like 2015, EC3 and TNA, he had the glasses, he had the TNA title, the suit. Mm -hmm. Look, your hair is flat. Your superpowers have died. 
I feel like Cook is going to lose. Not to the rest of the miners. Um, who they manage? That would be. Uh... Yeah, who they manage? I'm sure it's someone. I would say Brian Danielson, but he's fixing to not be full time, so that's not going to work. Right. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, uh, even in the comments, who would you guys pair the Bella Twins up to be as a manager spot, or just one of them? You know, uh, I kind of like to see them work with the, uh, Re the Renegade Twins a little bit. Hmm. That would kind of be because the Bella Twins aren't really twins anymore because you can tell the difference, but the Renegade Twins are still twins. So that would be that would, would kind of be kind of cool to see too. Well, you know, like the Re Renegade Twins aren't even sisters. No, I can tell them they're, apart. But they're twins. Mm -hmm. They're not sisters. Like that's really weird. Uh, I'm here for Battle of the Belts. Uh, well, thank you. I was, uh, I was in the bar for Collision with the local bar turned on TV. Yeah, I was oh, at the cool. movie theater. That's why I was late, and I was missing a little bit of it. And then I, I, I told him to cut it on the movie theater. I don't know about, like, what do you mean? Maria Canellis is managing the baby boys right now. And I, that makes me feel all sorts of not good ways. <laughs> I'm surprised she's not in the new uh, industry of kingdom. You know, that she's managing the, king, the kingdom in tag matches. Yeah. Okay. I disagree with you on that. Um, it has a lot of history to it. I agree. Thank you, Mr. Jacobs. I agree with you. It has history. Uh, Maria. No, this is There's only point. been three. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say there's only been three people to hold their title: Taz, Sabu, and Hook. Well, Ricky Stark. Oh, uh, Starks. Yeah, Starks too. Yeah. I forgot about Starks. And Jack Perry, who won it. Yeah, oh, well, Jack Perry. We count the scapegoat. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm surprised he never won that belt. Like in East W, I'm surprised he never won. I would take some very explicit photos with that belt. Yeah, so Brian Cage does also, have a long history, though. Brian Cage also, he was the first person to bring it back. Well, he didn't bring it back. Taz brought it back and gave it to Cage him. held it. Yeah, that's right. Cage held it for a long time. Yeah, he had it. I'd like to see. I don't uh, think it's lame, Olive. I think. Nope, don't say that. That's not nice. <laughs> I think the story, the story alone in the lineage of the title, that's what I think that's an, it's it's kind of ha has has a pretty good history to it. Well, and I think that's the whole thing with Hook Hook holding it. Um, it has a really nice, yeah, family history. I feel like it's kind of in its course. You know, they they brought it up Brian Cage, and then Ricky Starks held it, and then. Jack I think that uh, it is, I feel that it's hard for some people, but I can't feel like if Hook is going to venture out into, as people say, like the end, like doing the whole free agent thing and go other places and do other things that I don't think he'll need the FTW belt. I think it'll be yeah. about other belts and other promotions, and I think that'll be really great for him. And I will watch what he does. I think Hook is ready for TNT. Like he, he's above the FTW title now. Like he doesn't need that. And it's really just a prop at this point. It's just a prop at this point. Like they just, yeah. I mean, he can. I feel like it's ran its course. They brought it back. I mean, they put it on Brian Cage with the Starks. I feel like it's ran its course. Yeah. Maybe it's a great collector's item. <laughs> yeah. Ring of Honor. Yeah, Ring of Honor. Were you yeah, gonna say take Ring of Honor? Ring of Honor, yeah. I mean, it's not really an official AEW title, so it wouldn't make sense no. to get Ring of Honor. I would dig that. I would dig it floating around Ring of Honor for a little bit. I love Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor does amazing story and amazing wrestling. I like Ring of Honor. No, well, there's no. one person that should win it, and you know, FTW, ECW is hardcore stuff, and mm -hmm. Smart Briscoe is kind of hardcore. So, yeah, um, good thinking. But I really think it's ran its course. If they wanted to retire that belt again, it wouldn't. It, it'd probably be for the best. I think the only reason they brought it back and put it on Cage and as many people as they did was the journey for Hook to build with it. 
now that yeah. he has built, he does not need. Yeah, the, the long-term plan, I feel like, was, you know, Taz, Hook was still training to be a wrestler. Taz brought it back. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's kind of on its course, which uh, Hook's, uh, he's done a lot of stuff with that title. He's beaten, uh, mm-hmm. did he beat Jericho Ford? Like, was the, I know he beat Jericho recently, but uh, he used to have the Riddle and the I'm not sure. Awesome. Riddle, no cell loss. No that, that sounds like Matt Riddle. That sounds like Matt Riddle a lot. That's what WWE mm. fan. Like, did you guys know that he slapped... Well, well WWE fan for a lot of different reasons. <laughs> well, did you guys know that he slapped uh, Walter in the face one time? I, I haven't heard that. That's what... Uh, what were when they Walter called? Walter was bigger when Walter got small. What's up? Did he slap him in the face when he was big or when he got smaller? Uh, it was it was in WWE. It, it was it was on the main roster, so it had to have been when he was smaller. Okay, I was like, because when like he's a lot more intimidating of a man when he was larger. <laughs> Must have been the NXT days or something. I'm thinking it was the main roster because you know uh, Mace and. Um, you know the two guys that was with the retribution or whatever. Yeah, yeah. They Not they so. talked. Yeah, they talked about it on their. Uh, what was their like Twitch channel or something? They said he he saw Walter and he did something about it. Probably because he I, probably would have killed Riddle. Oh. But, I mean, I mean, Matt Riddle can. He's a beast, really. I mean, when it comes to fighting, I can't. I've seen I've seen this fight. He's not he's no slouch. What they doing since I think we see a bad on TV kind of my home that's explaining them to why it's like the nice title. Well it's kinda of like the hardcore title. Yeah, it, it, it pretty much uh mm-hmm. I mean it, when you think of the FTW title, you kinda of think of hook now. I mean it, it used to be yeah. Taz, now it's passing the torch to I think they'll retire it. I think eventually they're like Hook's gonna retire it, and then one day Hook's gonna have a kid. Hook's gonna be as big as he's gonna be like Taz, ball headed, and he's gonna bring it back. Mm-hmm. Oh, ball be, headed Hook. Because the whole point of the whole point of the title in the first place when Taz created is because he wasn't getting the respect that he deserved. He wasn't getting the title shots he deserved, and so he made his own title and he defended it, and barely anybody beat him for it. And then once he decided, like, you know what, I'm ready for a real challenge. I'm ready for, like, the real picture. It, pretty much, like, the, the FTW championship was pretty much a, a something to say, look, I can I can do it. I can hold some gold. Give me give me a shot, damn it. You know, pretty yeah. much. It's kind of like, you know, it's pretty, that's pretty much what it means. And that's what they're doing with it now with Hook. I actually like that, Mr. Jacobs. It's like the show me the respect that I deserve. Give me an actual shot title. Exactly. I freaking that love it. that. That's beauty. That's a solid way to look at that. That's what they should do with it. Instead, I love that. Instead, Brian oh, Cage wins it. Listen. Instead, like, Brian, Cage, Brian Cage wins it, loses it. They don't do crap with him. But uh, even Rick, right. uh, Ricky Starks, like he's ready for a uh, like he held the TNT title. I mean, the FCW is like three hundred something days. Like, Ricky Why Starks is there no be- reason to see Hook win in this match, yo? Good point. I mean, I, I can. Uh, I mean, I like Shane Taylor, but if anyone's gonna if anyone's gonna beat Hook, I don't know if it should be Shane Taylor. It should not be Shane Taylor. <laughs> Look, I, I like Shane Taylor. I've talked with him quite a bit. With him coming on this podcast, actually. No, I, I'm not like that's not it at all. Um, it's just that he's Hook has taken on such larger names. If Shane Taylor were to win, it's classified as more of an upset, in my opinion. Right. Hook has turned in the Perk Angle. Perk Angle in the house. Did you see that suplex? Oh yeah. yeah. Not this yeah. one, boys. He's tossing his big ass around the ring. <laughs> he really is. And you know when Stark's contract up, he's gone. You know what? I would love to see him working with Cody again. I think he'd be amazing oh. in WWE again. Hook's even laughing about it. What the heck? <laughs> Hook's in good shape, man. 
He's in solid shape. And you have to remember that he's still young. He hasn't gotten a chance to fill out yet. Like when I look at my, okay, I've been with my hubby for a long time. When I look at him 10, 11 years ago to him now, I mean, he was still a, a boy. Like, you know what I mean? Like, Hook is a boy. Like, wait till he gets to be yeah. a man. Like, you know? No, it's funny. He suplexed him across the ring twice and Hook just started laughing. Started laughing. <laughs> That's that Tasmaniac blood in them. I would have loved this in Hook and Perk Angle. That would have been perfect. Not wow, that would have been such a great match, though. Not just That's any Perk Angle. That's probably the high metabolism and how much he works out much. Sweets. He's out. I don't know. I feel like he's proven time and time again that size isn't really a thing when you know how to throw somebody's weight around. Um, right. Like I feel like it, it's it's he doesn't need to be massive to be successful, and he's shown that by like tossing around these massive, massive, massive men. Like I think Hook uh, stand really well. Like uh, his first match, he looked like he's been wrestling for years. And it was only his first match, and he was doing moves that normally a person mm-hmm. in the first match can't do. But he, he down a he like in his first match, he surpassed a lot of people's expectations. You're six four. You see it differently. I have I have seen a hundred and thirty pound itty bitty little waitress who's probably about five four take us like I want to say six four six five like. 250 pound drunk guy and flip him on his head. Mind you, she's a black belt in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. But size size does not really matter. Size does not matter at all. At all. In fact, it is the funniest thing in the world when big people think that little people cannot turn them inside out or turn them into a pretzel because it can happen. And and it is it is amazing to see. I think it's actually very impressive. So Taz is going to do a meeting with Jericho and Hook on Dynamite. For every Goliath out there, there's a David with a stone, you know. Mr. Jacob with the fire again. Perfect. Because, yeah, that's, like, right on the nose for sure. Oh, I love this. Why is uh, I don't know why they get Rocky Romero even on the show. I mean, I get that he's part of like the New Japan stuff, but mm-hmm. you got a whole list of people not even who are signed, not even doing anything. I mean, I would rather see Ethan Page in this time slot than Rocky Romero. So, uh, I feel like it depends on technique and and like. <laughs> Because what you're talking about, competitive like Taekwondo and, and Roman wrestling and stuff like that. But if you go like jujitsu and judo and like things that is, are used specifically to use people's size against them. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I would love to see it. I mean, I get that. I get the whole in like and everybody's entitled to their opinion. But I've seen some crazy things like crazy things in my day. Um, so I and that's know. what I'm saying. You can't, you can't underestimate somebody that's smaller than you. Oh, heck that's no, one of, that's just one on one. Where's Ethan Page being a super sexy? Actually, he hasn't even been on ROH lately. What has he been doing? He just won a title somewhere, didn't he? Well, he's someone that should be on AEW regularly. Like, I don't know why there's not a spot for like, that. I agree with. Like, what there's a lot of people. Like, Age, um, I feel, and and this is something that I feel is his personal story. He's been going through a lot of, and if you follow him on his socials, a lot of changes. Um, and he's really starting to like physically buckle down and and start um a different kind of journey. And I feel like what he'd been doing on ROH up until recently, because I haven't seen him in a bit, but his promos were were very um very awesome. They're very passionate. And I feel like he's trying to really build himself up in a different way. Not just all ego, but like really prove it. Um and and I don't know. I just I haven't seen him in a little bit. Now I'm curious. 
I gotta check his socials and figure out where because, my like, Ethan Page could be a TNT champion or national champion. Like he's from Canada, it takes time like Canada he, TNT mm -hmm. fits in perfectly. Like that's doesn't make sense. Like they're signing all these people and they're bringing all these people in from Japan and all these people, and then they got so many people that they've signed and do nothing with them. I mean, he's been doing some stuff with Evil Uno, Clash Wrestling. I just don't get the sense of like you're signing all these people when you don't even have, you can't even sign for people you do have. Um, I don't know if it's necessarily that they can't find something for them. Um, all the time. I, I mean, like maybe. Um, I don't know. I. I'd like I'd like to think that it's not that. You know, like because that just that is such like uh you... they signed all these people. A lot of these people shouldn't should have never been signed, but that's uh for another discussion. Yeah. yeah. They have enough time though. Like that's the thing. In my opinion, they have enough airtime with the roster that they have if they utilized it properly, but they put a lot of the same people on all of the shows. Yeah. Yeah, they uh, like some of these people never should have been signed. Like, golly, like, I mean, I get that they're like, if you want to sign people to exclusively ROH, then they should just do that. Like, Giant TV never should have been signed to AEW. Like, that, that's just a wasted roster spot at that point. Like, yeah, he's definitely yeah. more active on ROH for sure. I just don't get it. Like, Tony should really, like he said in 2019, I really wish someone would show him this back, and he probably has seen it, but he said that one of WCW's demises was a bloated roster, and you can't sign every talented wrestler that you like. Take your own advice. Yeah. I, like, I, I like seeing like Ethan Page. I miss Scorpio Sky. I miss Kip Sabian, Dark Order. Like A lot of these people, oh. I, got, I got invested in. Yeah. Then all these new people get signed, and then they just disappear. I know that Uno owns his own wrestling promotion, and he has been doing a lot of stuff with that. Um, but the rest of Dark Order, I'm not too sure. Alex Reynolds did just have a pretty decent singles match, which I was wondering why it was Reynolds. But, um, yeah, there's definitely, like, a lot of people that I would enjoy seeing, and I'm not sure why we're not. I'm just wondering if it's them going out and doing things or if it's just not being booked properly. And I'm so curious at the end of the day. Yeah, it's probably here. more than both. Um, right? Because, yeah. like, Uno is focused. Like, I, I know he's focusing a lot on, like, I see him um, calling matches and stuff. And, like, he's in a lot of, like, for his promotion. I'm fairly sure that's what this is. Because they're signing, like, a lot of these guys. Like, I, I could see a lot of people getting frustrated. Like, they've been here since day one. And they're signing all these people, and they just keep getting pushed back and pushed back and pushed back. Like, eventually, like, how are they going to have spots for Ring of Honor if they keep on signing all these, all these people? Like, yeah. They actually can't. need to fill some Ring of Honor, in my opinion. Um, they just need to have a better... Uh, and like they they released ten people, and they really need to start making some more. I, I hate to say that because you never want anyone to lose their job, but they've kind of put themselves into a corner because uh, you really got to pick and choose who you value most. Like you can't sign everyone you like because okay. uh, you want to see everyone get used properly, and you can't do that when you have three hundred fifty people on your roster. Uh, yeah, I feel like uh, I wish AW was on Scott Demora, and Scott Demora would book collisions. Because Scott Demora is a really good. If you ever watch TNA, he like TNA was on the verge of going out of business, and he came in and built the place back up. Uh, I think Scott Demora would be he he would probably benefit AW a lot long term. Uh, a lot of people in AEW just worked with them. Because um, a lot of people came from TNA to AEW. 
Uh, Ethan Page, we we'll start the more Brian Cage, Christian Cage. You know, I don't know if Adam Page is what we're thinking. I don't think so. Yeah, the Scott Demore would be a very great hire for AEW and help. Look, he would really help AEW. Uh, Scott Demore is a very great guy. I've met. Don't know. Complain about is this whole thing down there. Uh, well, Adam Cole is going to be cleared. Uh, he should be cleared after that. I, I'm personally, I think he's already cleared, but they're just not going to have him do anything until after Dynasty. Because the pay per view is called Dynasty. MJF had a faction called Dynasty. So, if MJF mm-hmm. returns they rest with the Von Erics. Yeah, for the hmm. titles. Tag titles. I don't think it'll be too long before Cole is back. So I think the, hopefully things start picking up when Adam Cole is officially cleared. Because it's kind of hard to do a lot when he's in a wheelchair and he can't really wrestle. And he's the leader yeah. of this. He's the leader of this faction, so it's kind of hard to do things. But um, do back to uh, Undisputed has been really good on Ring of Honor. The Undisputed Kingdom. Yeah, yeah the, the Kingdom are on. Um, they're the tag champions. Yeah. Tony, Bradley Pay, Guarantee Morgan Pay, the whole Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you. I've been using this one for a while. This was actually from a. Th- this is actually his theme song uh, picture, and I just cropped it and then made it my own, really. I really like Brian Cage. Uh, this is they redesigned and picked back up the other shorts. Yeah, they released Anthony Henry and then they signed him back. Mm-hmm. That was kind of weird. Rather well, than release him in the first place. <laughs> that was confusing. Like, there was a lot of. I didn't mean to fire you here. Our bad. Yeah. We met Anthony a go go. Oh, wait, no, we resigned him recently too. Apparently. Uh, Owens. No, we can't do that. Gosh, there's so many Anthony. Oh, I can make a good list of people to get rid of. And you probably know who's you probably know who's number one on my list. Yeah, I know. Oh yeah. Roderick Strong's already signed. It's already taken care of. He can get over it. <laughs> uh doesn't have Well, a lot of people say that, but they forget before a revolution, he was cutting some really good promos. Like he, he had that really good promo on Dynamite. He had a really mm-hmm. good promo with Jericho. So, like, a lot of people say that, but he... I liked all of his heel promos so far. I didn't like any of his face promos, though they were absolute trash. He's better as a yeah. heel. Mm-hmm. I agree. I mean, his face, his face promos kind of came off a bit cheesy for me. Oh, they were so cheesy, and not in a fun way. They were cheesy in a bad way, like blue right. cheese. <laughs> no one like he was TNT champion the first time around. They never really put him in any feuds with anybody. Like he would go against uh, Matt Taven or like they would just put him against jobbers, really. Like one time they put him against Tony Nese and they put him against like just random people. So it's not really like he can like have a story that like, get emotionally invested in so he can cut some promos, but yeah. Uh, if he, if he, he didn't if, really need to back then, though. Now he has some stuff to talk about. Back then, he hmm. was just a muscle man. Right now, he's been through so much. Wardlow has story now. Wardlow has stuff to say now. Wardlow has a reason to talk now. And I feel like it's showing in his promos a little bit more. Well, at the time, like, once he won the TNT title, he was right off the MJF stuff. He had beat MJF, yep. got mm-hmm. the TNT title. He had a lot of momentum. You know, he had the Goldberg chance, the whole crowd was chanting his name. Mm-hmm. Then they just kind of but that was a lot of bad booking with the TNT title. Like that's all um booking there because Wardlow won it and then Joe won it, then Hobbs won it, then Wardlow won it again, then Joe won it again, then Wardlow won it back, and then Luchasaurus won it. It is back and forth. Yeah, no one, was, no one was benefiting from that, but uh if you want to see Check out those. It was the two promos before Revolution. He cut one by himself. Um, mm-hmm. And then there was another one on Collision with Jericho. Both of those promos were really good. 
and he showed that you know he's not just built; he can talk too. So it's like a lot of people have already forgotten about those two promos. Uh, but he, because he hasn't been on the mic in a while since then. Right. Uh, it's summertime time I go back on the roster page and like, I forget he's on a couple. Dork order. Couple of <laughs> Dork order. You are hey. do, you, do you know who gave him that name, actually? Hangman Faye. Yeah, I hangman. love the Dark Order. I actually just think that the Dark Order went a little too soft for a little too long after they lost Brody and the momentum, like getting back to that spot, has not been too Yeah, you know, when he was with MJF, he didn't really have to talk because he was just MJF's bodyguard. Hmm? Well, not really bodyguard, but because he did wrestle a lot by himself. Uh, but it, 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 even in, in the pinnacle, he, he was. Like the pinnacle was like this, this generation's four horsemen, really. Uh, but I think Wardlow could be. I think he can definitely be an AEW world champion. He has the look. Oh, yeah. He has the mm-hmm. inner skills. He's improved on talking. Uh, mm-hmm. That's got to put him in some more bigger feuds before going for a world title. Like you know how. Uh, Swerve, like he was in a lot of big feuds before he went for the world title, like Hangman, and then he beat Darby, and then he beat, like he started beating a lot of big people and was in these stories, and then he was built up so much that he went, he's now going for the world title. That's what they need to do with putting us in some big feuds that's like, not like non title feuds, it's like mm-hmm. have Wardlow boot of Jericho and have Wardlow just dominate Jericho. I like Jericho. He's been the best of all time, but it's time that's passing the torch a little bit. No. Uh, oh, cool. Rocky's pulling it out. I thought we were, we were getting our uh, Rocky Rocky Mania moment. <laughs> you know, Hulk Hogan has he gets hit and then he points his finger and then does the leg. The Hulking up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really sure deal not this. That's the rule. I knew he was gonna say that. We all kind of um, do that. Mm. I do a lot of people. Never should have been some, like Nick Camarado. Get him out of there. Uh, I would put Nick Camarado more in ROH. I feel like, especially with his new chin, now that you can see his chin, um, <laughs> trying for a different look. And I feel like Ring of Honor is a place for that, where you are trying new things, different things. Like there is some people like I would cut entirely, but I feel like ROH needs to be more standalone. So. Like some guys, not necessarily cut them, but move them to ROH. I agree. Um, well, and there's people yeah. in there who need talented opponents. You need like they're like Athena's at the tippity tippity top. There's there's really like Taya Valkyrie. She could go against Taya Valkyrie, um, but like she's beaten everybody. Like if they would sign like Camilla Brickhouse just to Ring of Honor, that's the perfect person to uh, beat Athena. Uh, Camilla Brickhouse is basically just like Jade Cargill. You ain't talking about nobody beating my girl. <laughs> it's just, uh, Camilla Brickhouse is a little bit... Well, uh, Jade hasn't been in wrestling as long as Camilla Brickhouse, so it's not really in comparison. Like when, when Athena says that she's forever the women's ROH champion, I'm like... I'm there for that. Like that's you know, like, just bring her more opponents because like I'm I could watch this woman wrestle forever, um or let her lose it to like Billy and then come back and be all bitching and then have Billy build a faction that she can run through and just let me see it. I'm down. <laughs> Camilla Brickhouse. She uh, I know she said that she was talking with AEW, WWE, and TNA. So. I'm surprised she hasn't got signed anywhere yet. 
Hmm. But like if he's like she was on AW one time, Camilla Brickhouse. Uh, it was in 2021, maybe. Uh, it was like they were promoting an NWA. I believe it was like NWA had like an all women's pay per view, and they were building towards Camilla Brickhouse and Baylor Hirsch. Oh, neat. Hmm. Yeah, NWA had a. He was like women from AEW, TNA. Like he was a lot of women from different promotions for that one of them. That sounds really cool. Yeah, it was like 2021 or something like that. That sounds you know, right. I was mentioning, and I don't remember if it was here or in my community, but I was mentioning about how WWE always lands like these sweet moves that are like midair and stuff. And and I don't see that as often or as cleanly in AEW. And I've seen like two or three land over the last two weeks. And I'm like. Oh, uh, on Dynamite this Wednesday, when Pentagon did the move off the rope and then Edge hit him with the spear in midair. Yeah, that was, that was, that was really, beautiful. That was really right? good. And I was just talking about, like, I don't see that as much in AEW. And now I'm like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> like, that was the, like, that was the moral of the night on Wednesday. Oh, yeah, that, it was a solid spot. My pitch and Pentagon had a really, really good match. Brought it strong guys. Oh, strong guy. Now, he's going to have an actual title shot. I feel like this is part of his character. He doesn't want to have actual title shots. He just wants to have a eliminator match. Because he hasn't he hasn't defended the title not one time since winning it. I just feel like he's doing it on purpose now. Because he, oh, he, so. he doesn't want to he doesn't want to risk losing it. Huh. That's very Roderick Strong like though. Never thought of it like that. Uh, <laughs> boom! <laughs> what the hell? No. Whoa. Ward will knock the hell out of him. What was that about? <laughs> oh, man. You knock the fire out of him. How could you hit your friend like that, dude? <laughs> well, I kind of agree that she could do some... I, I don't know about moving her. I mean... Okay. You want to burn hell for this. She's owning ROH. Like, yeah, it would be cool to see her come here. And, but like, I, if I saw Athena come here to AEW and she didn't start plowing through people and climbing all the way up to the tippity top, it would make me sad inside because she is absolutely owning ROH. She is phenomenal. She is dominant. And it's wonderful to watch. If they really, they would go back to that soft grass split. Athena would work perfect on Collision. Like having her own show, her own brand in AEW, that would be perfect. I could agree with that. If they were to do a soft brand split, yes. But just because like you'd have to be able to have her plow through some people. And they got so many women right now who are like doing that build and going up that it would just be like, I don't know if it'd be counterproductive or if it would, I don't know. Actually, now that I come to think about it, I just think she's doing so well in ROH. She's just running out of people to destroy, that's all. <laughs> she needs to feed her more. Right, exactly. Yes, give me more. Indeed. Oh, she looks amazing. Marina? Or, yeah. Oh, sorry, Serena. Yeah. Yeah. Marina can't possibly look good. I know that my brain. You guys are fine. She will go the day I die. Watching somebody that love to get in there and I would love to tear it up with. And tonight I'm just saying she can cut a promo. Like but I have yet to receive my championship opportunity. And I'm not sweating it. Not worried about it. Because since my return, I'm undefeated. And I checked the rankings. And the professor is sitting pretty at number three, baby. Oh my come on. Well, I'm mean, mm -hmm. my way to number one. To inevitably become champion. So, Yuka, consider last week an invitation. An invitation to where? Into Deeb's dojo. So, you can show me how good you are. And I can show you that I'm better. And that I am what I say I am. I'll tap out for her anytime. A professional. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, last week on Collision. 
Yuka Sakazaki uh, in a match and they were teasing Beeb and Sakazaki. That was a pretty good match. I absolutely love Serena Deeb. That's how you deliver a promo, by the way. That was awesome. That was it, great. She's Ser like, Serena Deeb is always consistent with matches and promos. And she probably could. No, that would be think, pretty dope to see. <laughs> I love that. Like I know a lot of people. Like I was, I, I encountered someone on Twitter. I hate that app now. Uh, just for a few people, but like I was talking about the South Rand split and how like AEW has a lot of big names. Like mm -hmm. I feel like you're limiting yourself when you have the same wrestlers on all three shows. And then you're limiting yourself because that means a lot of wrestlers won't be a lot of top names won't be used. So if you uh then one person I like new time doesn't get created with the South Ross split, but all you gotta do is fantasy book it for yourself. Like if you fantasy book it yourself, mm -hmm. like you put like I, I, I fantasy book all the time. Heck yeah. And uh, like just fantasy book it yourself and you'll see time more time gets created with that. Like not like I don't think they should do like the WWE style. You know, no, 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 no. But they need they need to do it the way that Punk had it. Like Darby and Darby was on both shows. Like certain wrestlers were on both shows, mm -hmm. but you had a cert you had a good amount of people on just dynamite or just collision. I right. feel like someone like Athena that could benefit. If you if you had the women's title on dynamite and TBS on collision, uh, I think Athena could probably win that and just dominate everybody. Oh yeah. Uh, but, yeah. I would love to see it. I really would. And especially since we're we're having a lot of people come back off injury soon, so it's just gonna be more yeah. people. Yeah, like, MJF's yeah. Fixing to come. yeah. Ray Phoenix is fixing to come back. Uh Jamie Hayter eventually, Britt Baker. You know, there's a little Kenny Omega's eventually gonna come back, MJF. Uh Moxley, MJF. Like, Gosh, I miss MJF. I got a lot of big big I got a lot of big names and a roster split would probably benefit everybody because that would give more opportunities to everybody. Uh, I mean, it's just the different people, right? You're splitting up. It's not that it's creating more time. It's just you're splitting up the time more evenly, I, I feel. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. because, I miss like, Danhausen. Okay. He's out there wrestling his little heart out on the indies, and I'm watching him on his socials, and I'm like, gosh, I miss you on my television. But uh, forgot what I was gonna say. Oh, uh, my time is back up there. Yes, yeah, she has blonde hair now, believe it or not. Hmm. I like Rebel. She was yeah. a fun little twist to toss in. Gosh darn it, Lexi, you are just beautiful. Enjoy the No, we only did some bad. Yeah, but uh. I remember what I was going to say now. Uh, but uh, soft, like, ever since I stopped doing it, like, you'll see the same wrestlers on both shows now. Like, there's no, uh, like, AEW has a big roster that it's hard to see everybody. And if they if they went back to what they were doing, you'd see a lot of people get used more than they normally would now. Like, when Collision first started, we, like, before Collision started, we'd never seen the House of Black hardly at all. Like, we'd see him a little bit. We'd never really. But, uh, because they got a lot of people fixing to come back from injuries. So they're going to have to do something to create more opportunities for a lot of these people because they got a lot of big names. Why is Tina, though? I miss her wings. Yeah, those are awesome. Oh god, and the fact that she makes them herself is just like yeah. huh. and the fallen guys is such a great moniker. That's oh, I yeah. like that. I'm sure Connor has thought of a bajillion and a half different ways he would split that roster. That was actually going to be a series we were going to do. Me and Wayne, uh, when he was on here, we had made a draft. Uh, draft, and we, we planned doing 
episodes of us booking shows, he was dynamite. I was collision, and I had a whole thing. Like, yeah, that's awesome. I had a whole thing that a lot of people could benefit from. Heck, it even benefited Maria Shabir. She actually got better. Well, in my world, she did. I don't know. I don't know in real life if she can get better. <laughs> Keep on bashing her. Straight out of your mama's kitchen. I have not been following his Twitter. Oh no, Dan Hosen, no. I mean, but you love who you love, and you can't help that. And I respect people standing up for who they care about. Yeah, I agree. Nothing wrong with that. No, yeah, not at all. But I miss you, Dan Hosen. So how I was put it up. I'll give you 10 names for just dynamite and 10 names for collision. Like for collision, your big names are Edge, Christian, and Danielson. That's your hmm. that's your big three. Like that those are Edge and Christian and Danielson are three big draws. There's your first three. Uh, you could also mix it up with Collision with House of Black, Ricky Starks, Big Bill, Miro. Uh, you know, you got women like Athena, you got Jamie Hayter, you got uh, I'm, I might actually bring that thing that back. You should. I think that sounds fun. A lot of people seem to. But Dynamite, you know, you got the Young Bucks, Moxley, the Blackpool Combat Club. Um, and like certain people, you can have float around both shows. Of so you can still mix it up and you're not limited on who you can use. Yeah, I don't like the idea of a strict, like, stringent roster. I like the idea of having the floaters and, like, you know. But that's what they were doing. Like, that uh, Christian Cage was a little bit on both. Darby was on both. Roderick Strong was on both. But they had a good amount of people only on certain shows. And it made people, uh, people had a reason to watch Collision. Like, if you want to see this person, you have to watch Collision. I like that right. as well. Um, like a lot of people want to see Bullet Club Gold. Well, if you want to see Bullet Club Gold, you have to watch Collision. Then people will watch Collision. That extra incentive, you know. And like also, like a soft match would probably help. The, would probably help the titles, like the trio, like have the tag titles on one show, trios on one. Mm -hmm. I like so both that. Shows, so both shows have a decent amount of time to get focused on. So you put Rio, she could show up. Hmm, that's a good question. Oh, I put on Dynamite. Depends on what title. Uh, I mean, it really didn't. Depends on what title what show is on. Like if you. Hmm. Like it really didn't matter what show you put her on. Because she can have Maybe the. Maybe one of those Yeah, she's shiny the way. Yeah, she could. No. She's already won the women's title, but yeah, she, either one would be perfect. Now, like uh, Athena, Serena Deeb, and Chris Statlander, I'd all have on collision. Hmm. Oh, it's official. Roderick Strong versus Kyle O'Reilly for Dynasty. Oh, my gosh. No, that's going to be dope. Yeah, I like, yeah, I'm in with that match. I'm in with that one. Wow, the red velvet, you just took a solid bump on that apron, and I am very proud of you, girl. Like, that was a pretty good, uh, like, moonsault there. Mm -hmm. uh, flip on the uh, apron. I also like how velvet's getting, uh, but this year specifically, she's been getting used a lot more. Ooh. Oh, oh so. damn. That's how you check it. Okay, that was a nice one. Yeah. So, uh, her match against uh, Chris Dallin was actually pretty good. Um, collision. She she had a good match against Britt Baker. Like I don't know if anyone like remembers that. It was on Rampage at Halloween. That um, was the Abigail. best because Britt was like yeah. trying to do the lock job, but she like didn't want to put her hand in her mouth, and I was like, yeah, yeah. It was great. Connor, you got yeah, 
I think uh, Abidon's more on Ring of Honor right now, so maybe they're going to – that's the way for her to work on some things. Uh, she is looking she fine. Back. She's put in a lot of work physically. Yeah, I like if you look at her like, – from her first time in AEW to now, she's lost a lot of weight. But yeah, you, she's in if you want to see her without the makeup, she's a completely different person without the makeup and stuff. She's so pretty. She's uh, definitely. I like to see that like split personality, Abaddon. That'd be kind of funny. But honestly, yeah, a lot of people don't get her. Oh, yeah, really? oh, sorry, that's her ghost. He's just. I'm uh, gonna have to. I don't know. I like having a bit of a supernatural gimmick thrown in every, like, you know, and I, I really loved that. I actually kind of miss her older style of more stiff wrestling. I know people didn't get it and they thought that she was just being stiff, but bro, she's a corpse. It was a gimmick. Mm -hmm. Um, So she did switch up to a more fluid style. She speaks a lot more. She's kind of trying to adapt that zombie gimmick to make it more likable for the masses, but I freaking love it in my especially when other wrestlers play into it like yeah. Britt with the whole lockjaw like you know you've seen people have like the whole fear of her biting them and it makes her matches so much more powerful so a lot of it i think is on her opponent as well <laughs> i remember when uh athena was on dark and stuff she was stiff like she like this one girl she like did like a kick to and she was, she got swung into the barricade or whatever yeah i've seen that like people were calling Athena unprofessional, but like, it, it's part of the character that she like. She explained that she's playing a heel character, so she's she's trying to be a little bit more uh, stiffer, and she yeah, she definitely showed that side of her. And the truth is, if you if you watch Japanese wrestling, you'll see the same kind of style. They it's strong style. It they 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 hit a little, they hit a little harder to get it to get it in there to to make sure that it connects with the audience. Mm -hmm. I've never seen her on the RJ show. I'm gonna have to watch that. I don't watch his show. I'm not gonna lie to you. It's mostly because I don't have time. I recommend it. Hey EW on YouTube. It's 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 hilarious. That's what everybody says, and I've just been picking up. In, I'm like, I should watch that, but instead, I'm like, now I'm watching. TNA and I'm watching Raw and SmackDown and I've just added so much to my my wrestling that I'm watching on the regular that it's like I yeah. don't. <laughs> I think I think the best episode was probably the MJF episode with him and RJ City. I think that's probably the best episode he's done. Anything with MJF. <laughs> he just he just burns down. He just pretty much burns down the set. That's all he does. <laughs> Only about 10 minutes long. I'll have to check it out. Some days are usually my day off as well. Yeah, I recommend it. You'll love it. See this on Reddit? I can only imagine what it says on Reddit. We, so we've, got a lot of, we've got a lot of stuff like that. Like someone, we've had comments like that. that they, they found us on Reddit. We're on I don't, Reddit. I've been looking. I don't post this on Reddit. So someone who watches us posts it on there, and I guess someone's. People see it and they come here. Oh, well, Nifty, that's so awesome. Welcome. Well, whoever's doing it, thank you. <laughs> so people are yeah. coming here. Uh, his recent show with Lance Archer was pretty good. The last thing I'll say about Abaddon, I said before, uh, there's a lot of new people here, and you may not have heard me say it, but you know, Abaddon could be a really good crossover wrestler. And you know what? They only had it on TV like once or twice. But if they consistently had her on TV, like a lot of horror fans would probably tune in. Like I know a lot of horror fans that don't watch wrestling, but they would probably watch Abaddon. And then mm -hmm. they see Abaddon, and mm -hmm. then they see some other wrestlers like Moxley, and then they become fans of Moxley. And, like they become wrestlers, of, they become fans of wrestling through Abaddon. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot of horror fans that would probably be attached to Abaddon because of her character, her look. Like, it's very horror like. Uh, but they got to be consistent with that. If they were consistent with it, they'd probably make a lot of new fans through Abaddon. 100%. Mm -hmm. Got to add they a little do, bit of flavor. They could do their own cinematic match with, like, if it, if it grew so much, like, she got new fans, they, like, do a cinematic match with Abaddon. Like, that would, that would be a, 
a lot of cool th- a lot of cool things they could do with Abaddon if they uh, were consistent more. Mm-hmm. I like Abaddon. She's one of my favorites in AEW. Ooh, that was a good move. Ooh, Ooh I thought that was going to be it. Whatever happened to Amber Moon? <laughs> uh, she's a. Uh, she transformed. Into, she evolved, as they say. She kind of looks like a Athena, but I don't know. A little bit different. <laughs> like Pokemon, she evolved into Athena. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> I don't know what this red devil is going to set up here. Ooh. Wow, that was, that was pretty ah. good. That was it pretty looked good. neat, eh? It yeah, did. She almost didn't get that off, but she that, that, that was pretty cool. Ooh. That was, <laughs> that was pretty good. What a sale on Ooh. that one. She almost had Athena beat right there. That was a 2.99. Oh, yes, it was. It was very close. She oh, had my gosh, Athena. Athena, you are just jacked. She's the only one that probably have come. Well, a lot of people have probably come close to being Athena. But that was really That cool. was very close. Like, that had me like, you <laughs> know, and down we got uh, Kata and the Young Bucks versus Pac, Penta, and Garcia. Three of them. John Moxley returns as I do. So John Moxley is coming back on Dynamite, I guess. He's unfortunate. Wow. Scoop Slam. Maybe. Velvet is making these slams with her hair look so Ooh. good. Planted her with that one. I think she just pissed off her velvet even more. It looks that. like it. <laughs> the lady of rage. <laughs> look at the little face on her. I love it. <laughs> Would it be an upset if Billy Starks cost it Athena? I think it'd be amazing. Have they ever run against each other one on one? Oh, I don't know. Hmm. Oh, wow. Just oh, man. Around. Ragdolling her. I think she's got her beat now. She's already dead. Unless the girl's got something to pursue you. Uh-oh. 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 Roll up. Oh, not a close one. That was close. Super kick. Oh, what Damn. a shot. That was a nice shot. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Athena Six and uh, put this. Enough for the eclipse. No, this is a really – I've always loved her finisher. Oh, perfect. That was, that was smooth. That was perfectly done. That, that old face good. gave me goosebumps. That was a really good match. Oh, that was oh, that was awesome. That was very well done. Oh, I love this Nina matches. Ladies got the main event and killed it. Anytime I've, I've always seen Athena, she's always been good, but... I first seen her in NXT, and she was really, really good. And she's always been con- been consistent of putting on good matches. Mm-hmm. Hell of a main event. Oh, nice like angle on that replay. I feel like every time she tries to go higher, doing that finisher, and see how far she can go up and do that. 
it just looks so flawless too though it connected so well like it it just it looked good looks, mm -hmm. it looks easy to do but quite a lot you know they still got that move the eclipse in the uh, wwe 2k 9 uh, 2k 24 they still got that move yeah they got a lot of moves that people previously the kenny omega's moves in there uh Ooh, oh, boy, howdy. You had that, Joey. <laughs> Damn. Well, looks like Athena has another opponent. Looks like it. Hopefully, it's not Marina Shavir. <laughs> it's Marina Shavir I'm walking off the set. Um, oh, man. Ooh, it's it just off. told her to fuck off. And wasn't wasn't I just saying Red Velvet and Tina Madonna for Tima? Mm. Ooh. Tina Madonna and Tina Madonna. Tommy Nada went to shove her out of the ring. And, Damn. And Tina told her to fuck off. <laughs> Damn. She was is, that a, is that a running white noise? That was dope. It was very cool. That was, that was really good right there. That was... What are you smiling about, Billy? You see, you see her just laughing. She had a big <laughs> smile on her face. Yeah. <laughs> Darn your right. Got, your friend just got drunk. You smiling? <laughs> Billy and her have a very interesting relationship. I met Billy Starks like in person, like, and uh, I mean, you can you can tell that she can. Uh, she, I feel like she's the one that tries to make people laugh in matches. She does seem very comical. I mean, she's getting a lot darker, which is good. Like, yes, she's still happy, but she's definitely taking on that, like, kind of twisted. Like, did you guys watch her match where she won the TV title? Yeah. Yeah, I've seen that. That yeah. was so awesome. Like, I was legit concerned. I thought that she was hurt and, like, neck hurt. Like, like, yeah. like not good hurt. And everybody in the entire arena was quiet. And it was so well done. And it, but it made her look like such a little see you next Tuesday. Like, <laughs> man, you really scared us. Yeah. Like, holy crap. It was very well done. Um, but it was very heel. And like the the promo that she cut with the or the, I guess the little video that she had with her parents afterwards, where her mm -hmm. mom was like berating her for winning like that was so awesome like billy is on a very cool path and i i know that she's gonna take out athena like it's just athena built herself an opponent in billy oh yeah it's inevitable it's so what do you guys rate this i guess we lost connor for a moment i assume he'll be back yeah he'll be back yeah oh man uh this is gonna be a tough one i think for overall i think uh, well, I'm gonna start with Collision first. I think Collision was pretty, pretty decent, honestly, and uh, it 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 kept me and it kept me invested, it kept me in enthralled, as they say. And uh, that one match, the uh, the Blackpool Combat Club. That was yes, that was probably the match of the night of, as far as Collision. I think so. And uh, right. from I think as far as Collision, I'm gonna give Collision probably uh, I'd say a solid eight. And for Battle of the Belts. Uh, I think I'm gonna give that. Uh, actually, I really enjoyed it, so I think I'm gonna. I might just give that a, a solid nine. I like that. I'm. I'm gonna follow you on that. I'm gonna give it a, a collision. Is gonna get a seven seven point six from me. And battle of the belts because it won. It ended with my with my girl winning. I'm gonna give that like a nine point three. <laughs> well, that's fair. What was the match that kicked off collision? I believe it was uh, the the trios match. Yeah. yeah, that was that's solid. Was looking, like that's who I was looking forward to. Like thirty like thirty like colliders on the show. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure they had a good match. Like there, a lot of stuff I didn't get to see, but I came in on the uh, Shibata and Lima Yardi match. That looked like a pretty good match. Uh, yeah. My right isn't going to be as efficient connected to the well for about the belts it will be, but Collision, it won't be. Collision, I'm going to give a. Uh, just from what I see, I give it a 6.9 out of 10. 
But once I watch the House of Black, I can probably give you my rating. It'd probably be a seven point five. After I watch the stuff I missed, so I'm gonna give Collision yeah. a seven point five. Uh, and about the belts, uh, I actually give it an eight out of ten. I thought it was a little bit better than Collision. I loved Battle of the Belts. I thought it was great. But then again, my girl won. So. The only thing, I, like, I don't know why, Roger, like, why was there an Eliminator match on a show called Battle of the Belts? It's, it's the Battle of the Belts. It's not the Battle of the Eliminators. I kind of didn't get that either. Yeah. <laughs> like, Roderick Strong won the belt at Revolution. And Revolution was a month ago, and he still hasn't defended the belt once. His, his first title match would be at the very next pay-per-view, so... He went in a whole pay per view without having to defend the title. Uh, but Hook and Shane Taylor was a good match. Uh, the, main, the main event was, of course, good. Athena and Red Velvet. That was a really, really good match. Probably the best match on Battle of the Belts. Uh, Roderick Strong and Rocky Mero had a pretty decent match. Uh, so, yeah, 8 out of 10 for Battle of the Belts. And uh, Collision, I'll give it a 7. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and give the rating that I'll probably will give it once I see everything. But 7.5 for Collision. Heck yeah. Um, says show. Collision, I'll give it a 5 out of 10. And Battle of the Bells, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. Uh, All right. Battle of the Bells definitely like the better show. Uh, yeah. But uh, I'm going to go back and watch the House of Black. I really like the House of Black. That was a great match. They're the only colliders on the show now. Nigel McGuinness was there. If the yard ain't there, the Starks ain't there. I don't know where Nigel McGinnis went at, but I guess he sat at home and ate apples. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you guys don't know, if you guys don't know, that's all Nigel McGinnis eats. Uh, I went to a convention. I went to a convention and he was there and he's just eating apples like one after another, after another, after another. Yeah, they are delicious. Yeah. And then when we, <laughs> once they met him, like how much ever you paid, how many push ups he did. So I I got a picture with him. I paid him twenty dollars, and he did twenty push-ups. So, so, <laughs> so, so, like the more money he like, it, like the amount of money you paid him, so much how many push-ups he would do. I've never seen a wrestler. Do it. Yeah, he was doing jumping jacks and push-ups and eating apples all day. And he's very nice to me. If anyone ever gets a chance to meet Nigel McGuinness, I definitely recommend meeting him. Very nice guy. Oh, Gabe Cleveland, I scored it last match. Yeah, I don't think you enjoyed that. No, <laughs> I remember you not liking that. <laughs> it was all right. I felt like it should have been a tornado tag match because they were outside the ring for majority of the match, so it should have been just a yeah. tornado tag match. Um, yeah, uh, pretty good overall night, both shows. Uh, we'll be back uh, Tuesday for AZ Canada. Uh Wednesday for Dynamite, Thursday Talking Elite. Uh, we, will, we will be posting another interview pretty soon. Uh, we probably might have an interview next week, possibly. Uh, depends on where all I get scheduled. Uh, but we'll probably announce it uh, on our socials, Facebook and Twitter, Instagram, uh, those places. Definitely check out our Spotify account, our Twitch. Uh, we're on uh, Apple Podcasts now. Uh, we're basically anywhere you get your podcasters. Uh, we, we were just on Spotify, but now we've uh, expanded a little bit in the podcasting uh, yep. areas where people get their podcasts. So we're on Apple Podcasts, we're on Instagram now. Uh, all those links are in the description below. Go check us out. Uh, and also subscribe here. We gained a few subscribers tonight. Uh, Thank you so much. Six four. So whoever subscribed, we really appreciate it. Uh, yeah, and if you haven't subscribed, we definitely recommend you subscribing to freshly, fresh, freshly new content every week, live reactions and talk shows to interviews occasionally, uh, even daily content at times. Uh, yeah, we do a lot of stuff on here, and we definitely appreciate you all watching. We have a lot of people on here throughout the night, it seems like. So we got 15 people in right now, so we definitely appreciate you all sticking all the way through the hours with us. So we definitely appreciate you all. Uh, oh, yeah. But yeah, we'll see you guys Tuesday for AEZ Canada. Peace.